Oh, we're live. We just finished watching House of the D. House of the cool. D. And this was a big D. That was a big D in this. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Hey. Welcome, Welcome to the show. We just finished, and uh, Shad just got here, and we got our drinks and went pee, and uh, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. What an episode. Wow. Oh, Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. <sighs> Character development, acting, acting without speaking or completely describing stuff. Uh, it was uh, something else. And they it was an incredibly tense episode. That's yeah. for sure. So, uh, yeah, we have uh, the long man. Oh, he's over there. The long man. <laughs> Paul, what's up? Hello. Wait, what are we are we doing? Just hellos, or were you saying what we thought? I can't remember. I think we say what you thought. I like that. Oh, I, I loved the episode. Oof, that was good. The, uh, as we just mentioned, the tension was higher than ever this time around. Just scenes of people walking around in a place. I was like, Ugh. yeah. Like, <laughs> like, oh, they said so much just by looks and glances and what they focus on. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, and then we got a scene a little later where things were oh that that boiling bowl of all the water spilling over the edge. Now we're really, really. It's like they're trying to get us as close to war without getting there. <laughs> like, no, not quite yet, not quite yet. And you're like, oh, all right, fine. Yeah, I was very happy with it. Very happy and happy to be here. Happy to talk about it. And we're happy that you're here too. Uh, Shad M. Brooks, author, swordsman, YouTuber. Extraordinary. Hello. Hello. How are you? Man, I friggin' love this episode. I mean, it's hard to pick between this one and uh, the one with the feast, but this might be my favorite. Like, like, it was just so damn good. And I mean, holy crap, We the, the kids were introduced to us last episode, and man, I'm friggin' like, like, like engaged with that. We already had know a lot of the character and its development. So if I was to compare this one, this one gets a Kriegsmesser comparison, how much I love this one. Like, oh, look at this beastie sword. It is aggressive. <laughs> it cuts straight through to, to the target. It hits hard. That's a this is a Kriegsmesser episode, baby. Love yeah, it. Yeah, awesome. And uh, and thanks for being here. I know you're a little under the weather, so we appreciate you being here, man. Show it's okay. Good good media gets me fired up as bad as as good as bad media as well. <laughs> oh. and this one was damn good. I was just I, like multiple times it got an audible response out of me. I was just like hell yeah, or like oh, yeah. Like, like it. it Rarely does that happen to me with a show, and this one got multiple ones. I was just like, mm, mm, Can I say, the kids' fight choreography was better than anything in Ring. I know. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> it was. Italian <laughs> girls uh, knew what the hell they were doing. They were throwing haymakers. It was good. So yeah, that was uh, that was embarrassing. It's embarrassing for Rings of Power. It's jarring. Just finishing yes. reviewing that and then seeing this, I'm like, oh, this is from now. It's weird. It's so weird because I usually, you know, when I see something good, it's from five, ten years ago, but it's from now. Uh, Fringy, welcome aboard, man. How's it going? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad I could finally make it to one of these because uh, I do like talking about this show. It's good to have an opportunity to talk about it, especially after that episode, because that was great. That was really, really great. And it's such, it's, that episode just highlights, like, this show is incredibly ambitious. It has so many characters it's juggling yeah, and, and so many elements in play at once. And it balances them so well. It's just nice to, like, watch a story <laughs> compared to, yeah, having recently just finished talking about episode six of Rings of Power to then jump over to this, an actual story filled with well-realized characters and such a tense episode. It was great. That was a really great episode. I'm looking forward to talking to it. 
uh, talking it, to it, talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and just on the note of the ambition, right? It introduced characters that I was like, hey, this is interesting. They just kill them off last episode. And this episode, the, the kids really get to shine my holy crap. I mean, like, it's it, it's got such balls to just, all right, yeah, this character's done. We know what we're doing. We can get you an, a new character that you'll be really invested and interested in. And what's the kid's name? Is it Aegon or Amon? Amon. Amon. Yeah. A- Amon. Yeah. What a friggin' badass! And I was like, you know, <laughs> like I liked him just even in the um the funeral scene, just the things that he did in that scene. I was like, huh, this kid's not bad. And then what he does to the rest, I was like, oh, dude, this kid's awesome! Oh, it's kind of crazy, to- like how much they're able to achieve with these characters, given how many of them that they have to. Like these characters, essentially, like. This is their episode where they get to, you know, take a more active role in the story. And even in that one episode, like, you clearly understand who all of them are. Like, they've all been set up really well to clash and, con- uh, like, fight one another. And it didn't it didn't feel contrived getting no, all the kids no, to didn't. fight each other. It felt like the ten... It's so fucking well done in that all of the parents' bullshit has now dribbled down yes. all the way to their kids and the results yeah, that the, the kids world. are getting beaten. The and world. the subtle escalation in that conflict was just, you know, where you took my dragon. No, I, I, I will maybe wait for it till we get to the scene because that escalation <laughs> just, it was one thing after another, which would naturally build up the insult, insult until someone pulled up. Mm. The show just knows how to build drama. It knows how to set these characters up with their differing traits and beliefs and goals and then throw them into situations where they have to clash. And part of the reason why the clash is so cathartic this episode with basically everybody is because they've been building it up slowly over the course of the whole it's season. It's so I'm so starved of cause and effect that I was, <laughs> yeah. I was sitting there watching them. I knew Eamon was going to lose the eye, but I was like, how are you going to justify one of these kids getting a sword strike or a knife strike on his eye? And like when the kid picks it up and he's moving around, I was like, Oh, is it just going to be as simple as he just gets to jump on him? And then, uh, 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 which whichever one of the sons, he he pockets sand, he throws sand at him, it, it makes him like you know stagger. He can't look. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. And then he gets the easy shot on his eye. I was like, that's it. You've done it. That's how you would do it. And of course, the kid was about to get hit with the rock theoretically. I know. That, What's he going to use? Subtle, the sand. The subtle escalation is perfect in that. No, so, it's just, just think about the fact that it was those two brothers working together. Meanwhile, where's uh, where, what's the old one's name? Aegon. Like, Aegon. where's he? He's nowhere to be found. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, these two he's... brothers working together that triumph because it's pretty clear throughout the season, uh, throughout the last two episodes, that they have more of a relationship. Yeah, uh, I what they should have gotten is one of the um, Valerian girls to get a horse. And then she gets on the side of the saddle and then swings mm. at Eamon's face. <laughs> Don't to, remind me. Chops yeah. his head off. <laughs> and, and, and then he just explodes into pieces, even though yeah. the, the sword was so far away, it wouldn't have even touched. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to bring that up a lot. You saw the thumbnail, guys. Okay. Out there in the chat. Yeah. I, I, I set your expectations. <laughs> that was very. <laughs> Oh, so uh, well, I guess we'll get it. I, I thought it was uh, great. Um, can't wait to watch it again. And yeah. uh, you know, like this one, I actually I want to watch it again. I mean, of course, I want to watch the, all the other ones as well. Um, and I have no objection watching them again. But this one, so much happened. I want to watch to just double check and see if some of my suspicions and interpretations are right because it was so compact with like really interesting things that I'm keen. I was like, all right, I need to get more information. Feed it to me. I love how um, Damon in this almost almost the whole episode up to like the last quarter, he was such an a, agent of chaos. Just he's not on anyone's team up up to a point. You know, he, he was just sort of here. And yeah, just just uh, I assume you put up this screenshot for a reason. But being like uh, you know the the purity of the family is the most important thing. Whatever, he just starts <laughs> laughing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the lines, I the dialogue and writing is just so good in this show and i'm starved from it having to put up with rings of power yeah. and uh, like you know where they they create analogies that make sense of the context and he says in valeria like salt courses through our veins um uh, so you know it's something like a it's uh, as it is thick and true and stuff and is looking at um the kids when he says oh the, uh, the princess it's just mm. yeah and damon laughs damon laughs, <laughs> He snickers during the wedding. 
So he's yeah, he's cut like this whole opening scene is tense because we have Viserys has come over, the high towers are over, the greens are there, the blacks are there. It looks like it's the first time they've seen each other in a long time, and they hate each other, they can't even get near each other. <laughs> and then we got Renera, like, doesn't even know if she could approach Damon or not. Yeah, I mean, this is right after Renera left King's Landing in shame because of, you know, Strong basically admitted what was going on. And if this is the first time she's now interacting with them after it's become so clear, yeah. it's like, ooh, and everyone's just looking at him. Yeah, because yep. um, everyone is aware, but no one would want it to be. No, everyone's aware of what happens when it becomes public, too. But it's yeah. an absurd situation. We're all we all know, but none of us can say it. It's not it's not to be considered. I think truth. that seems to permeate a lot of the uh, like a lot of the dynamics here, where there is a truth underlying it that the characters are aware of, but like they can't be overt and even like going and talking to certain people because it just draws attention to uh, and that. that. And that doubles up in that any character seeing any two people talking is paranoid because they're just like, yeah. what would, what are you talking about? What are they Why talking are you, about? Are talking? Mm -hmm. Everyone's just waiting for that spark. Yep. Yeah. And you're getting to know the kids in this quiet scene where there's no talking. It's just like, oh, we see how they react at a funeral. And Agen right there, yeah. Ford <laughs> yeah, just, just, wants to, care. just wants to go bone a wench. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my god funerals are boring uh and we have jace and luke uh you know strong boys <laughs> very strong yeah. master <laughs> and they're uh what was what was interesting for them is that they even as, despite their age they're aware of the, mm -hmm. the roughness of their situation being that they have someone to mourn but they can't yep which gets brought up later in a very interesting yeah. way i thought uh, yeah, yeah, same, same. Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading a super chat there, but I'll get to that in just a second because I had a big word in it that I, I was like, I, oh, it's machinations. Okay, I, machinations. <laughs> I don't know. That you know, one always there. stumps you, Gary. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot of words that stump me. <laughs> it's getting ain't getting any easier. I'm getting I'm getting older. Uh, so. Yeah, this whole funeral scene is yeah, it's pretty quiet and it goes on for a long time. Mm. But there is so many subtle things to pay attention to. Yep. I mean, we, we see Otto there and he just glances down and the hand badges on him is like, oh, yep. So we know what's happening. I was very there. happy to see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glad to see him back. Uh, yes, I was too. And he's about to shine. Um, the thing is, they they like fast forwarded a lot of stuff, right? So the the um these are going to be the the last episode. And this episode is going to be the only two episodes where you see the kids small. Yeah, and uh, the one uh, thing the showrunners said uh, that didn't annoy the shit out of me was uh, they said that this is you know where we where this part of the story is about the kids, so it's not really as much about uh. Renee, Renera, and Allison. It's about the kid, so they had to introduce them quick, and just like, sorry, uh, not sorry. Uh, think, think about like how much progression on any character we've gotten in Rings of Power in now six episodes, and we learned more about these kids at a fucking funeral where they didn't say anything. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely insane as a comparison. These are absolutely polar opposites. Uh, like you keep seeing Viserys glancing over at a. Damon, and the only impression I got was, oh, you poor guy, you just want to be friends with your brother again, don't you? Like, mm -hmm. and this is your chance because he's back, he's not in uh Essos anymore. This is an opportunity, oh. and he finally, after several glances, musters up the courage to go and speak to him. And again, my heart bloody broke listening. I to know, him. Bloody, like, <laughs> poor Viserys, he's just. He's such a nice guy, he's trying to just <laughs> get his family to get along. Oh, my heart breaks for him. I, just, I love him. Fair. <laughs> it, it really isn't fair. So sad. When he when he says like the gods can be cruel, he's like they've been cruel to you, and he's just he just looks down like yes, like like, yeah. it's just, it's like oh man, do you need to do? I think even David <laughs> recognizes like man, I am kicking a dog right now. Like this is <laughs> this is just mean. It's just mean, and he makes him get up. Damon's sitting yeah. up there, and he's like, no, the king's coming to me. 
I'm the I'm yep. the grieving, I'm the grieving husband. Get your ass up and come to me. And it's like, oh, you dick. And that summarizes his incredibly complex feelings for his brother, doesn't it? There's a lot of stuff there. It's uh because he still still feels for him. He's still his brother, and it's just it's just great work. Yeah, it really is. I didn't catch everything she said, but uh basically most of what she said was the the dance of the dragons spool green spool of black intertwine like once yeah i say, think she said human dragon uh dragon scale something like that but she was basically telling you that um there's gonna be a big civil war <laughs> between the targaryens coming up if you didn't if you haven't catch caught it by now uh oh yeah this, it's probably worth mentioning i guess now in the previous episode one of the lines she had was uh when when aemond was in the room was one eye will shut forever or something like that yep it's just there you go. There's a payoff for you. There you go. Well, so she's a dreamer, so she can uh uh I don't know if she has green dreams, but she can definitely see the future, which makes her character a little more interesting because not much is said in the book. So <laughs> we'll see if they uh, bring in the magic factor in. I can't believe this show skips that many years between episodes. It's insane that we can maintain a strong storyline doing that. It's like it's got to be unprecedented to this degree. I, I, I've never seen a TV show that skips this much time and manages yeah. to maintain the important parts of the story, you know? Yeah. Like, I can only think of a book that had really big time skips that threw me, but I still got an engaging story. And it was, um, I think it's Magician by Raymond E. Feist, where they, he does these big time skips. And I was just like, whoa, what's going on? Uh, but yeah, I, I can't think of a show that does it like this. It's, it's and just a lot more than once, you know? <laughs> Because <laughs> when, when it was like next time on Rings of Power, and, uh, you see an Amon's grown up. I was like, oh my god, I want to see him. Are you kidding me? Let's see him right now. And it's like, <laughs> nope, you gotta wait. <laughs> and uh, they also like again multiple things. They're showing that the sister is not only weird, but she actually is perhaps prophesying about certain things. It contextualizes the relationship between the brothers, but it also lets us know that the eldest brother is betrothed to his own sister, yeah. and uh, and he he can't stand it. But the younger brother is like duty i'll do it you know if you uh, i can say ah it does so many things there's so many things just unpack and pick apart and learn just in brief in, um exchanges like this and even from this beginning i was like oh the younger brother i, I kind of like him <laughs> just from the this first interaction with yeah, it i i would go as far as say this was Eamon's episode uh yeah it, it was the mvp oh yeah hell yeah um yeah yeah <laughs> i mean he MVP alone for getting himself Vega, surely. I ballsy as hell. As yeah, could have gotten himself loved. killed. Oh yeah, That's he's a... gonna. Yeah, he's gonna be kind of the Damon for the Greens. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, that little scene where they're, you know, it's like, hey man, you got to totally hook up with your sister. We we learned all about those three. Like again, and just they're passing by. They're about to go to another group. Uh, but that's, you know, that was the whole purpose of this. And then we get, uh, Allison who just looks like she's about to have a nervous breakdown with, uh, Sir Kristen Cole, just bitter dude. Um, <laughs> then, you know, the, uh, that's, uh, I get, I can't remember if it's Jace or Luke. I get it mixed up, but it's one of the two. It's one of the strong boys. It's one of the bastards, uh, goes and comforts his, uh, his cousins, Mm. Doesn't know really to do it, and she grabbed and held his hand, and it's like, okay, interesting, you know, and wonder what that's leading to. Um, uh, and look, I was wondering, like, that seems to be fairly familiar with people that wouldn't know much about each other, but I guess you know, she's sad and she's reaching out for some support, which is a kid, and so maybe yeah, like, it's yeah. interesting. I wonder where it'll go. Um, also, when Renera enters this kind of like armor. Um, uh, what do you call it when you eat food after a funeral? Oh, is, I forget the, the name of it. But when she when she arrives, everyone just looks at her and kind of almost there's like just they're avoiding her, and so yep, they're just yeah. contextualizing how people are looking at, at her just by body language. Oh, it's super awkward. That's what I kept on saying. I'm like, this is whole thing is effing awkward. It's nobody's <laughs> gonna talk to each other. Uh, I mean, it's you know the emperor has no clothes. Everybody freaking knows, and they don't. In the, I guess in the book you get the impression that some people know, but not everybody knows. But you, it's different when you see it play out. That uh, er, that down to the, the tavern wench knows. Everybody knows. Every well, I mean, 
No. Uh, like that scene when Renera enters, she notices Alison looking at her and she just gets really awkward and just quite uh, p- straightens her dress. And it's just like, oh, a conversation just happened right then where, yeah, uh, Alison knows and Renera is like, oh, crap. What, you know, and she does it, she's kind of floundering, what am I going to do kind of thing. And that was just a look and an interaction. It's something as simple as that. So you see that Corliss Valerion is really, you know, he's committed to legacy. But he's going through a lot this episode. He goes through a yeah. lot. He speaks the truth later on, which I like, which I think is what Ver- where Viserys is coming from, too. Like, he knows the kids are bastards. He's like, what? it's just a name. That's all. Our, our, our pure Valerian blood has been muddied and subtled a uh, long time ago. Long, long time ago. There is no pure Valerian blood. So that, that's gone. But it, you don't need it to be pure because they're still dragon riders. Uh, well, just, um, it's, it, you remember, because uh, that was one of the things that he tried to set up as an arrangement was that um, marrying uh, Rhaenyra to Lainor, they would have uh, his last name. Like, it's, it's, it's now, it's starting to make sense by the end of this episode, basically what, like what his perspective is and how it is uh, different from what is often expressed up until this point when he talks about bloodlines to, you know, finally realize that that's actually not what matters to him at all. There um, are bloodlines different... and then there are quote unquote bloodlines. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes either is good enough. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, and, and, you know, that and that voiceover we heard over almost every trailer, you know, what is, what is this mortal life? Something except for, uh, the preservation of our legacy or something. Uh, very, it's the kind of thing a lord would say. Well, and also just seems to be reflective of a major theme of this show, especially yep. when you take it with uh, the final speech that was given by the Master of uh, Whispers in Episode 6. Just seems to be that that is, that is a big through line, is like legacy through heritage lineage. <laughs> this show is about family. It's a family show and what <laughs> not to do. What not to do with your kids and your relationships. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I feel like that would be the through line for this episode. It's just the repercussions of your the the parents' choices through their children almost. Yeah, like it really becomes apparent at the end of the episode mm. that the decisions of the parents and the world that they live in has mm. uh tainted essentially um any chance of like meaningful relationships. Um, with these characters it's all just being damaged like they can't really be friends and there's no reason why they can't be friends or like each other um but the world that they live in is going to force otherwise oh is that the message for you i thought it was don't marry your cousins and your sisters because everything's going to go to crap if you do <laughs> yeah i mean that one <laughs> might be it too i mean well, maybe they would have been better off if they had married their cousins and sisters right now <laughs> actually <Yeah. laughs> Uh, there's Amon. Little did the end. This is his episode. He's a little gutsy little bastard. This episode. Oh yeah. So yeah, there's that big awkward, and then then yeah, Viserys finally talks to Matt Damon Targaryen, and he's a total dick. <laughs> he's just, he's just like, desperate. He's like, please come home. And uh, I was, I was, I feel like he was on the edge of saying something like, you know, I don't have a lot of time left like please sort of thing but i feel like it was all there in, 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 except the words like he tries every he's just like please 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 come back there's a there's a seat for you you know there's just come back and that's that's the serious <laughs> character he, he literally couldn't care less what whatever uh um <laughs> he's, he's mad it's like yeah david is done like anymore he's just like no no just come back and uh by the way all the other characters rely on this as a as a characteristic of this series his forgiveness his uh mm. complacency he's just that's who he is you know it, it's he just funny, wants like... to be happy in the happy big happy family <laughs> yeah. and he will never get that he just <laughs> no. it's impossible. he can only ever pretend no, it's a chance. best he can not a chance <laughs> For for all the like you know crappy uh, morally gray characters that George gives us, then he gives us a Viserys or an Eddard or a Dunk and everything. And like, I, 
what works is the contrast because you see these very human people that are serving their own ends and they'll do bad things and sometimes good things, everything. But then there's, there's a, like, uh, then there's these standout people and uh, it just makes them stand out even more through contrast. And I love them. And it's like, you know, I, I, it's, I just generally, I wouldn't think that I'd love a character so much that from, from that's made by George when it's known for making such morally great characters, but he can pull it out. He can, he can really just pull it off, make a great character. And Viserys is just, Oh, I love him. It's <laughs> kind of what makes it so tragic though, is that he can't, <laughs> For as much as he wants to be good and um, yeah. and be nice and kind, this is a world that isn't very nice to those people. <laughs> well, I feel like this episode actually pushes the series to some of his limits. It's jamming him between two very important sort of. He can't be complacent. Well, he can't he just can't... be like everyone, calm down. He has to make some decisions. This episode, at some stage, he has to make a choice. It's. I mean, it's it's what it's all. That's what the build up is, isn't it? It's just. Yeah, everything's good, but then every character around him is like, well, everything's not okay, and we all know it. Um, and you can and deny it as much as you want, but the time will come when yeah, uh, this is again, all going to come to a head. I like to speculate, because I don't actually... I've spared myself from knowing what else is going to actually happen, yeah, I mean, but knowing anything. that we're skipping that much time, next episode of the series is probably now going to be in the phase of he can't rule, he can't even get out of bed, mm. probably, and that means that mm. his hand is taking over which yep. is like a nightmare for the uh, the black side of all of this. <laughs> the hand and Alison. And uh, man, we see how much authority she has and how far she's willing to push it, even when Viserys yeah. is in the room. Um, we, right now, when it, and so if he loses even more power and strength, yeah, it's just, you know, the queen will be ruling, basically. And by the way, it's been 4,100 days since the last book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I have to do Really? That. Yeah. It's over 11. Wow. Well over 11. <laughs> so Take much, this time. As <laughs> much as I like this show, I want the fucking book. <laughs> Give me the book. Uh, I swear to God, if they finish this show before he puts out. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Hail to all on a related question. Would you guys like to see an Aegon's Conquest series? Uh, we get to finally see Balerion uh, and the start of House Baratheon. Love you guys. Keep up the great work for 10 British pounds from Sean of the Dawn. Uh, you know, if it's good. Yeah, if it's good. If they're going to take this approach to it. Um, I, if this thing is popular, I think there is a, vi unless it's just trash where there's a very good chance we get that Jon Snow show. I, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like they need to, they need to remake the last seasons or redo the entire series of Game of Thrones and build off of the people and competence you have in this series, um, and try and do that and give us, you know, high production values and things and stuff. Well, this is why, yeah, this is why you, you, it's, it's how you finish, right? Ladies, it's not how you start. <laughs> That's true. We're yet to see what happens in this series. I was like, look, I'm yeah. grateful for the good episodes we got so far. Well, let's hope it finishes good. Oh God. Cause I know uh, this thing is uh, game of Thrones. It's pushing game of Thrones into the ratings again. Right. So it's like a top five Nielsen show now again now it's based on minutes there's a lot of fun really funny math involved in that but yeah it, it pushed it up pretty crazy it's been uh it seemed messages people saying like oh, i'm checking out game of thrones again it's got me in the mood and it's just like you be careful <laughs> uh, very <laughs> very careful if you want to be curious and watch like the first two seasons okay well you want to go beyond that you're on your own <laughs> Still sucks. that's the thing if, can you watch up to four seasons and then just cut yourself off? Or you're like, eh, we'll watch a fifth one. We'll watch a, this is some good stuff in the fifth one, right? And then you're like, oh, the sixth one. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I oh. did it. I cut myself at like around the fifth season. I was like, I already know how it ends. Don't need to watch it. It's been good so far. <laughs> I would just say, forget it exists. And and this exists like in the book universe or something. I, I, that, that way, it, you might be able to reconcile it in your head canon. But no, I, yeah, Shad is right. If you're going to watch it again, I don't know, stop at Hard Home. <laughs> That's a good episode. Hard Home's a good episode. And it was more satisfying than anything that happened after that. So, 
Watches of the Wall. That's the last episode. Okay. God, that's, that's a good episode. <laughs> that is a good episode. Oof. Uh, Cameron Hill for five dollars says, "I thought all the scenes at night looked really beautiful." I, uh, I was making the guys watch on a really dark screen, so sorry. But uh, I'm sure in my home theater, it will look really good. Uh, it looks like they really shot at night. Thumbs up uh, to the cinematographer. Well, maybe they learned from the long night. Freaking Vagar is big. That, that is a big, <laughs> enormous huge, dragon. Still just huge want to dragon. Praise the design of it as well. It's just I just love how much older yeah. it looks than all the other dragons. And it and also, it makes. Yeah. The effects, that, that whole scene, like... I, I really enjoyed it. I wasn't looking super close to see, ah, is that real or not? I just thought it looked great. And um, uh, compared to Rings of Power, it's just uh, the budget difference is still so funny. Westerling isn't? is really catching on with Kristen Cole. You saw the looks with him, right? Oh, yeah. He's been, <laughs> dude, uh, throughout the season, if you go back to even episode two, he's uh, he keeps an eye out and his ears are out for everything. He's much more aware of stuff than I think he gives off. Yep. Yep. Well... No, uh, we're gonna we're gonna lose some characters. <laughs> oh just, yeah, well, dude, the fact that the, the, the next series work. the series says I'm gonna go to bad Emma. I was like, oh, oh no, mm. I, 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 I is, like I would forgive anybody for thinking, oh, so his, his mind's falling apart. It's like it's more than that. If you watch him at the end of the previous episode, he's practically crying over looking at his rings, which the ring he took from Emma when she died. Because that was his true love. That was the actual relationship. The one he has with Allison is bullshit, and he knows that. He found it out not too long ago. Um, so yeah, his mind isn't on her. She doesn't even like him. There's no respect or love in that relationship. It's all for show. It's duty at this point, which was not the point of it. It was supposed to be a loving relationship. The you know, poor I guy... There's respect. She, like, she does care for him, you know, Allison. She, I'm not sure about is... that at this point, after what's Maybe. happened. Maybe. But she's still, you know, caring for him, as in like looking after him in his old age yeah. and stuff, doing her duty, not complaining. And this is the only time where she kind of voices the mild form, like you could interpret as resent, saying like, where she says, like, I did what, you know, what was expected of me and you flaunted it. Oh, it's good to so I'll, I'll wait, well, I'll wait until we get there because I love so much of that scene. Um I've always gotten a sense from Allison with the way she speaks to Viserys that she is very tired of his approach. Um, mm. but at the same time, she's absolutely beholden to his approach. So I, I find it really great, but yeah, just him saying Emma, I was just like, ah, cause that, that woman is on his mind at all times. That's the love yeah. lost because he, he forced her to have more ears to fix the line, to save the world, to save the world from the evil white zombies. They're going to be coming uh, all they need was to give the knife to, to Arya Stark. She comes I hate out. that knife. <laughs> <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> Throw it into Mount Doom. <laughs> oh, we did get it's it's sem I can't call it full confirmation, but we got semi confirmation that the uh the the song of ice and fire, the prince, uh, the the poem that's inscribed on the knife uh is a spoiler for winds of winter. It is it comes from George. So it's not just I mean, it's still fan service in a way because George approved it, but it's part of the book. So at least we got that. I don't know if that helps because the book's not going to come out. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Mini Ga Galen for two dollars says, "I love Matt Damon Targaryen, but Aemon has become the reason for writing uh, with the Greens." Eh, wait. I'd say. Um, oh, I was supposed to say this at the beginning, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, don't. Uh, Anybody out there, don't name your daughters after Rhaenyra, okay? Remember what you went through with Daenerys? Warning, warning, warning. I mean, <laughs> just what was shown in this episode, what she's willing to go to, she is awful. Oh, she's terrible. Well, yeah. I mean, because you just, when you point out the good characters and you mentioned one from Game of Thrones, one from this show, and one from yeah. Duncan Egg, it's like, yes, because everyone else is kind of an asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nettles, you might want to name your daughter after Nettles when you meet Nettles. Um, I would re remake uh, Game of Thrones from the beginning, doing what viewers haven't seen. You don't need the show, uh, the execution of Ned Stark, just reactions of people not there. Use magic and book characters not shown before. I, I mean, I, 
what what I said earlier was they could do a Aegon's Conqueror prequel, this prequel, uh, Robert's Rebellion. That'd be 10 years, 10, 12 years. Then you can remake the thing and yeah, then remake so. the book, not to like what they, so it would be drastically different. Um, even if they just adapted the books, I mean, they did a pretty decent job, but they, they left out a lot of shit. Uh, and, and George said he stopped hearing from him around season five. So no lady Stoneheart, you know, that, that was huge. That was huge and frustrating that dude. That's why I hate season four's finale. This lady stone has another reason why I was expecting my end credit scene where the two, the phrase are walking through the forest and they're going to go and collect the, but it never happened. <laughs> it was oh, never there. God, that's such a good chapter too. Oh, the, that's the epilogue at the end. Yeah, it was. Right. It's all there for them. They could have done it, but they didn't. And what did they say? Something like, "Oh, we couldn't fit her into the story. There wasn't enough time." Boo! <laughs> yeah, yeah and like a, a more accurate adaptation to the books. I think fans would love that. Yeah. Hell yeah. And she and she is really important to the story, even though she's on the peripheral right now. Mm -hmm. uh i absolutely think she's connect she connects to john somehow yeah that's it's you kind of honestly you kind of need her the stocks you need you need that vengeance <laughs> like it's uh after everything that's happened it's, it's a rather catharsis related character but it also causes problems because she's not just going after people you want dead well yeah that's i mean that's the whole thing with the red wedding right the whole thing with the red wedding is you want to see the payback for that somehow some way you want to see the payback for that. And the books are building it up. The books, I mean, like the ones that aren't going to finish, it's the Grand Northern Conspiracy, and there's this whole thing going down at Winterfell right now with uh, a wedding, and, you know, the the Northern Lord's uh, loyalty to Roose Bolton is questionable to the point where a couple of Freys get baked into two giant pies, and they get fed to people at the wedding, including Freys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, they tried to recreate that with Aya, didn't they? Didn't uh, work. No, it didn't work. No, and it's with big fat uh, uh, Lord Mandley, uh, and you know they just underestimate him because he's just fat, and they think he's weak. But the guy's like hundred percent badass, like just total. Nah, he was just waiting for his son to get back. His son came back. One of his sons got killed at the red wedding. And they cooked a couple frays and some pies. You know, and fed him. Oh, that, that, that just sound, that sounds like common with Scott Tenerman. Yes, that's a reference Gary's not going to get, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Well, oh, well. Right. You guys, I'm, all you youngsters will probably get it, so that's all right. So, uh, to be fair, even people who are fans of South Park might not remember it that well. Yeah, but, that's an old episode. Yeah, people will. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I just want to remind everybody this is this is a therapy session as well as a review consistent one for the horrors that was wrought upon us from game of thrones this was set up in episode one's review <laughs> i just want to make sure we are allowed <laughs> um stannis so yeah. is still alive stannis is still alive in the books and that's a good thing stannis the man you know he's still alive in my heart I still <laughs> no matter what. uh and they, has his little they, finger and varus and everyone else oh yeah if they do remake Game of Thrones, I know of a Winterfell model that they could use as a redesign. That's more oh, there you go. Out of the, free to use it. Be my pleasure. It gets a little dark. So, okay, maybe you saw it. When Otto Hightower is just kind of watching everything go down right now. Um, King says he's going to bed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so this. Just so, before it's worth highlighting with, with Otto, uh, Damon walks past him and he says, you know, my apologies, or my condolences, my prince. And then he says, even a, a leech, even a fat leech will want for another meal. It's such a good line. There's so many good lines. It's a great there. line. And like, think about that you know, analogy and stuff compared to what we get out of <laughs> Rings of Power. Right, look, give me the meat and give it to me raw. Water can't give my thirst. But he is always right. I was instead Rocks of being like, down. instead <laughs> of being like, whoa, whoa, don't stab uh, uh, Adar. We need him to blah blah blah. Instead, she's like, hey, hey whoa, 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 seawater, seawater. Remember what I said? Seawater. Don't drink seawater. It's like, what the fuck, woman? <laughs> it's not the time for analogies. Just tell him pragmatically why you shouldn't kill Adar. 
It's ah, oh, so the, again, she did. The quality is just amazing. The difference in quality is incredible. It and is. So, Ah, oh, good yeah. writing, good al analogies, and I mean it contextualizes a lot. You know, you know what Damon thinks, still thinks of Otto, and you know you're a leech, but it's also an apt analogy about you know Otto getting power and all that stuff. Ah, it's good. So Egan's just like passed out here, right? Yeah, drinking too much, yeah. doesn't care, mm -hmm. just wants to have some fun. And obviously, this is like Otto's prize. This kid, this is the yes. super important. So the Otto yep. loses right. Otto gets pissed. Yeah. I love it. Like it gives him a good solid kick out of the ass. It's like you stupid. Get out of here. Get in bed. You know, like drinking around. And then we also see we see the the brother. He was there and he's like the, the, it was the brother that dobbed him into Otto. I was like, yeah, oh. Eamon told on him. I was like, Eamon, I like you, buddy. You're a good, you're a good sort. Eamon's <laughs> more I'm, aware of the situation, yeah, I, I reckon. I'm not sure I'll be saying he's a good sort later on, but uh I'm saying that about anybody, Shad. Is 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 a clever guy and is a you know duty knows what's needed. Yeah, uh yeah, and uh, have we is this before or after the uh Lenor is like is Lenor drunk? Lenor is really sad because he he was he's very really... close to his sister, so he's yeah. out there, he's pouting out in the water, and Corliss just doesn't want you know, like everybody's watching. It's, it's a his terrible point. look. It's a bad it looks look. weak. Yeah, it looks mopey. Is the king consort is supposed to be, you know, strong and and it's just like, oh my sister. And well, yeah, and, and Paul is probably should have gone out there himself to walk him back himself. That looks way better than when he's like, Go and get him, and then everyone turns to look and it's like, oh shit. <laughs> And he sends he sends the you know go get your patron and it's his his boyfriend that he sends out. I thought it was like, oh. which is another open secret. Everyone yep. knows, and <laughs> everyone's just you're not supposed to say it, but you can joke about it if you're lucky. They focused a lot on Corliss's ambition. I hope they get into like his uh, badassery. I mean, the guy like was on nine voyages around the world. He's been to a shy. He's probably been to Valeria. Like. Uh, all his money came like he he earned all his money. It's not like he they they had a big war chest or this was a rich family. He made him a rich family. At this time, they are as rich <clears throat> as the Lannisters and the High Towers. Uh, the only time, so yeah, it's an open. You're right, Jane. It's an open secret in the family. Plus, his son's gay, and that you know that's that whole and and the the bastards are in question, and everybody knows. Everybody knows. Um, but yeah, this is Otto Hightower like showing some emotion. Like yeah, getting, yeah. Not, like Tyrion slapping Joffrey, you know. Uh, <laughs> I liked it. Well, just, that's like... uh, that's indicative of you've achieved something when when somebody is acting in a way that's just different yeah, from well, the way that they yeah, normally well. are. What? Because the Gary's copyright testing right now, kid. Yeah, I, know, right? <laughs> I like pushing boundaries. All I'm saying is, it's yeah, it's just when Otto is acting so differently to how he normally does. It's just super interesting to see. Yeah. There's Eamon waiting for his chance. And this so many this glances. Is, There's just so many glances that tell yeah. you so much about what's happening here. So this is a huge slow boil, right? Just within this episode. And then like things jump off. And again, it leads to a kid fight that's more exciting than and, and that <laughs> than <laughs> a drink of power. There's a bunch the of battle. crap out of each other. <laughs> You're not kidding. I was more invested and excited in that kid fight than the entire Rings of Battle, Rings of Power battle sequence. <laughs> I can't think of a bigger own to it's Rings such of Power. A, it's so beautifully done. Of course, those kids would be like, "You've taken our, our mum just died. That's her dragon." And then he's just like, "That ain't how dragons work, baby. It's yes. mine now." And they already exactly. set up in the previous episode. He's desperate for a dragon. And now he's got the biggest dragon on Earth. Or, 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 <laughs> it's Western. poetic. It's poetic. <laughs> that's what I mean, though. But we, we got the... They built them up, and now they're going to clash like that. And as you were saying earlier, Shad, it's like, that's the perfect foundation to then have them spar verbally until a certain thing comes out, which yep. is going to force other things to come out. Like fists. 
<laughs> so this this you're in the 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 solar not the solar the common room or, or the main dining room or whatever of uh drift market gary gary you know what a solar is in terms of castle architecture sir i I'm do I, I've, I've read a song of ice and fire they tell you what a yeah, solar is so i was oh, gonna I didn't call it the big the room yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he gets we, he gets some stuff right, and I find out he gets some other stuff right. But the, yeah, the whole of my medieval uh, vernacular comes from from reading fantasy. <laughs> it's not all well, it's good, but yeah, this, this would be the great hall, uh, the great hall. Like, but like having okay, totally having been in like three castles in my life, okay. But uh, like I stayed in one in it, uh, Sicily uh, three years ago. Uh, they are not comfortable. They're big. They're airy. They're freaking cold. Uh, my castle was right on the ocean, and the like the, when the high tide came in, like the the fucking the sea, well the Mediterranean Sea came in under the the it filled up a tunnel way. <laughs> so it was like an eight hundred year old castle. It was cool as hell. Uh, Shad, uh, yes. you can rent it out, right? And they they all the stuff all, all the old books and and uh, in China are just left out on the fucking table. You can just touch the books and read them and shit. And you're like, holy <laughs> crap! And of course, <laughs> I walked in with my backpack and knocked over this fucking teapot that was probably 500 years old and broke it. But uh, oh, cool. God. <laughs> did I ever tell so you? As soon as they all they're all they all run in, they see you and you just go. It was like that when I got here. I all right, right, Gary, <laughs> Gary, quick, quick. You know, Spitfire thing. I, I let's test your knowledge of castles. You still have trouble with matriculations. Do you do you know what uh, the garderobe is? No. Oh, okay. It's a no, toilet. It's, it's, it's a oh. toilet. It's right. It's, it's funny they kept their uh, cloaks Privy. and coats in them because that. Well, it was usually called a garderobe, right? Because they okay. kept their coats in it in there because the smell would keep away the moths, and that's where we get ward like garderobe to robe to wardrobe and stuff. Oh, uh, and I remember. Uh, they, see, they told us a lot. Well, it was it was Sicilian, so <laughs> language was a little rough. Quick, quick aside to show you how clumsy I am, and like I am a danger to many, many things. I went to the Museum of National History uh, in London. Uh, my wife was teaching for Vidal Sassoon at the time, so I was alone. So I just walked around Lon London alone for during the day for two weeks. It was fucking great. So I got my backpack on, and I take a private Darwin tour. So I get to go see all the like all the stuff he collected, all his bug collection and shit. So they pull out his bug collection. There's like all of Darwin's uh, butterflies, and somebody I thought somebody called my name, and I swing around, and my backpack hits his fucking butterfly thing. Oh. And the lady just she was she go doo, 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 boop, 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 and caught it, and I'm like, oh. I'm gonna leave now. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I am an ugly American. And I'm going to leave. I almost, yeah, I almost like took out some of fucking uh, his butterflies, dude. Uh, okay. That would have been bad. It was so embarrassing. It was the most embarrassing thing I ever fucking done in my life. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I had I had to go to the castle owner and say I broke your teapot, dude. I mean, because I, I wasn't gonna just like let it sit there. Mm -hmm. Offered to pay for it. He wouldn't take any money. He was a nice guy. So. Oh, good for yeah. That. I just can't go anywhere nice. <laughs> That's the... uh, sorry, I get distracted by castles. Back to the episode. No, castles good. Uh, castles I'll, I'll send good. you pictures of it. It's uh, oh, I'd love it. Castle Falcone, Falcone. Uh, Falcone. It's fucking rad. It's so rad. Uh, but this is rad too. So what I wanted yeah. to mention was they get this shit right. It looks airy and cold yes. and damp, and you know it. Like I don't know if this is a set. But I know that in the past they have shot in like real halls, like real mm -hmm. castles, and, and and like, and that's that's your difference here. This is this this is an experienced team that has made this shit before, compared mm -hmm. to brand new newbies from Bad Reboot who can't manage to make a good television show, much less a, a movie or a Star Trek movie. They can destroy franchises. They're very good at it. They're very very good at it. They're on their third right now. Uh, and you just see a simple scene like this and it just looks, the verisimilitude is there. It looks real. I feel like I'm watching a something that's from like a fantasy world, which is all I ever wanted, you know? And we got the shot is a lot great. of the theme that uh, I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for Rainies to... Yeah, yeah, because the previous scene, I, you know, when they were looking at the kids, I was like, 
all right, right. Well, how do these parents feel about it? Because this is supposed to be their yeah. heirs. And I, I was expecting they'd have to have some strong opinions on it. And I'm glad that it comes out here. And it, it comes out beautifully as well, because it mm-hmm. starts with Rainey's basically being like, I want Driftmark to go to to the daughters because they actually have the blood. They're not bullshit. And if, but if you do that, it delegitimizes the sons. And so, it's over Renera, and it and it undermines yeah. the entire realm. And R- R- Rainey's has to know that, especially since I have accepted that I'm not the queen. Really, have you now? Because that suggestion that is interesting, would, isn't it? Would, yeah. be an, would be a three way civil war. And this, that's the thing. This conversation goes to a very specific place, but there's several pla- things that aren't discussed, such as like, do you care for those non bloodline children exactly. or not? Yeah, yeah, like, oh man, I do feel sorry for those boys. It's not their fault. Yep. And they, they're just born. And look at the crap storm that they are mm. born into. Like, holy crap, that would yeah, suck. Tough for them. Oh, I, I love that line as well. He's like, you, you'd have me increase the shadow over their heads. And then she's like, we're alone. You can say it. <laughs> like, you don't need to be vague. And she's like, yeah, but nobody says it, okay? <laughs> like, we don't talk about it. Um, and yeah, and uh, every scene we see these two share, it'll often be a reference from Corliss about how, you know, she deserves what she's had stolen from her. It's her right. It's her power. It should be her. And she just finally comes out with like, shut the fuck up. You you want it. No, it's not for me. <laughs> and it's just like, ooh. And he doesn't uh, he doesn't do much to deny that. He doesn't really deny. That's right. It's just... well, he comes back with legacy. Like, hey, what is, what is this brief mortal life? But a legacy. Yeah, he's basically oh. saying, like, well, yeah, of course I want it. Don't we all? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, all you want is money. Well, I mean, it's not all, but money's good. I like money. I like being able to pay my bills. It's good. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Services. Would say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but what I think he kind of trumps her at the end when he finally gets honest. And, uh, you know, she makes that proposal, like, to go through our daughters. She, and he's all, you know what? blood isn't important a name is it's the it's name. name that's all it is uh guess what bastards have probably sat the throne there's a very good chance that you a battle well, there's the president you can legitimize bastards that is a thing you can and what, what's anyone going to do about that nothing and then it'll just be over time it'll well, be remembered as well there you go. that could be another prequel that could be another game of thrones prequel because there is a guy who legitimizes all his bastards, and it turns into the Blackfire Rebellions. So, uh, yeah, it's Aegon the Unworthy, big fat glutton king who just fucks everything that moves, and whether they want it or not, and has tons of bastards. And then on his deathbed, goes, "They're all legitimate." Because <laughs> <laughs> we had. Um... Uh, Roos legitimized Ramsey in the show, and uh, Stannis offered to legitimize John. Right? He said, "I'll make you John Stark." Yeah, which um, which is funny and inconsistent for Stannis because uh, he just thinks a bastard's a bastard. But uh, well, it, so it, the thing is about Stannis being inconsistent in the show is that that's not long before he burns his own daughter, which was not well yeah. received. Well. The thing about Stannis in the book is like he he acts like this like really hard edge guy until he needs something and then he's like willing to fudge rules a little bit. <laughs> it's totally cool when it comes to him. Uh, but I love Stannis so much. He's he's just iron oh, will. You gotta love the iron will of that guy. Um, and that's why. Oh, don't get me started. That's the fucking end of that book was so frustrating because like they have set up for an entire book that he's just dead. He let he leaves Winterfell. His men are dying. He's burning men alive for for eating, uh, you know, the dead people who have died already, and they need to eat. There's no food, so he's like, and and he's got all these Northerners, right? And but he's burning people to the Red God, and they they're like, oh fucking Red God, that Red God is crazy. So you have like multiple armies praying to multiple gods. They all fucking hate each other. The Northerns hate the Southerns, uh, and so you know he's gonna win the battle. Like, that's what George does. He sets up this big thing like Stannis doesn't have a fucking chance and he's going to totally win. But now we got to wait 11 years to find out. That's the frustrating part. It's because it's good. (laughs) Therapy session. Remember. Okay. So, like, I'm a bit with the wife on this one. If, like, if you have your inheritance, 
you would want it to go to your actual grandchildren. I mean, you know, your your son married this uh, yeah, but Dad, princess. Think of the repercussions. I know, I know. I, I I get I but I get it from the family side of thing as well. I see both sides. I'm glad and they portray it well. But you're right, you're right, man. Those poor kids. No, if, if he yeah, if he grants those daughters the inheritance, they'll die. They will die. He's like putting them to death. And I'll then that back. signals to the whole realm that the uh, the Valarians don't believe the sons are legitimate either, uh, which is that's big potatoes. I'll call back to Song of Ice and Fire again. There's a chapter with Tyrion talking to Valerio, uh, Valerio, um, in Pentos after he escapes, and he's like, uh, I'll, "I'm going to put a crown on Marcella," and then uh, Valerio goes. What did she ever do to you? Why do you hate her? Why do you want her to die? <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, oh, you know, that's, that's, you know, the, it's, it, Viserys says it in the first episode or second. He said the Iron Throne is the most dangerous place in Westeros. You got to be ready for it. Um, well, that and, was something in the, uh, the initial scene where they're all sort of looking at each other and different things. But when Corlys talks to, um, one of the, and dare I say, one of the strongs. Um, and he explains to him, like, you know, you're going to be the Lord of Driftmark. And then he's like, I don't want to be. And he tries to explain how much it means. And he says, I don't want to be because that'll mean all of you have died. Yeah. Which is such a, that, that perspective is lost on all the other characters. They don't care. They're just like, what what do I get? And what do my kids get? As opposed to, I would like to, well, Viserys is that kind of character. I'd like mm. to have happiness with all of you. I want to just hang out. <laughs> just want to hang out. Go to barbecues, do attorney, you know? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Uh, so we have um, D Matt Damon Targaryen and Rhaenyra going on a very long walk on the beach. Two Targaryens alone. We know what's going to happen. Yeah, it becomes and a this, very long walk. <laughs> very yeah, this, long walk. This was set up. I mean, like Damien, he had enough of the funeral stuff, so he get, gets gone. She sees him leave, and she's following after him now. And she needs allies. She's in a tough position. And if anything that Damon has shown, he's shown that he is, uh, you know, like loyal to her, cares for her, even. And uh, and yeah, uh, you can. It's just so well set up. So like you could you predict it. Like of course this is this is what would happen. Uh, and so, and remember, very, he has an army. He has an army of sorts, the gold cloaks. Mm -hmm. They're completely loyal to him, no matter what. He created them. So <laughs> uh, so they go on a walk, and this is intercut with uh, young Amon running out to to Vagar, which is, I mean, it's going to be dark, but God dang, those scenes were cool. The, the dragon looked freaking magnificent. Ah. It was awesome. I like the whole, just the flying scene with the dragon. It gave me kind of how to train your dragon vibes a bit, actually. It did. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the same thing, actually. Mm. How he's like and struggling that, and then he eventually gains more confidence. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good thing, by the way, because How to Train Your Dragon is a freaking awesome film. Uh, but they even like that you almost get a sense of a bit of vertigo because they actually convey the height uh, of this dragon when it's flying through the air and what and the kids on it is like trying to hold on and crap. It, it was great. I was like, ah, oh, this is awesome. It it felt to me like Vega was kind of testing him with that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you can pull this off, then sure. <laughs> and it's very really interesting to have, you have a scene where in, in and of itself, it's a character basically, you know, coming to gain control over a dragon, which is something that he desperately wants to, to have this dragon. And it's a really triumphant moment for him. But just the implications in this world, it's just so <laughs> persistent in the show is there's this thing and you can look at it uh, and what it means for that character personally. But in this world, with all of these, you know, factions and groups and rules, just the implications of these um, moments, it's just like every scene is layered. It's really cool. It's just impressive. Yeah. I don't, look at the scene that Gary's paws on here. That's a friggin' poster right there. How awesome yeah, does that it is that look? Yeah. Just and just immediate standing. instant oh. characterization for, for him. You know, like mm -hmm. instantly. It's just like, this is who this character is. Is really and cool. There's, uh, there's comparisons made often, right? These are these are medieval nukes and stuff, and it's like it's a little bit 
they're better than nukes. They are <laughs> machine guns that fire nukes and that they give birth to younger nukes that you can then, you know, like it's, <laughs> they they're are, not just uh, one use nukes, they're repeated, you know, usable nukes that are very maneuverable and uh, and you can travel faster with them than any other means of transportation in the world. They're, they're crazy. And you rarely have to use them. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in this world, you rail. I mean, just the thought of them scares the shit out of people enough to to have a peaceful society. Uh, but now we found out that Targaryens are, you know, the tar like Valeria could have conquered Westeros whenever they wanted before their doom. They were the most powerful empire by far in, in the known world. They were more advanced. They had massive slavery trade, massive resources, magic multiple thousands of dragons they could have conquered westeros whenever the hell they wanted uh there was always a theory like they were afraid to do it because because of wargs uh because of the starks uh but the starks kind of forgot to be wargs uh george's you know like every stark is a warg every stark uh just like uh, you know every uh targaryen potentially could be a dragon rider just depends uh but sometimes they forget uh but yeah they they, they conquered it to to fight the white walkers um, and again, I have to think of my book canon, but this picture looks like, like a fantasy painting. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, look it looks at like a book that's cover. A, that's a 3d model. Yet it looks seamless and integrated and uh, like someone painted. It looks amazing. It's great. And it's yeah, just cool. And, <laughs> It's like how does he how does he get to the dragon before those other girls? It's like, well, it's just he he was he wanted it. He wanted the dragon. <laughs> yeah. He really <laughs> wanted to get that dragon, and he went out there to go claim him. And like, look at that, just totally fearless. Well, not totally fearless, but, you know, brave in the brave. face of uh, this massive creature. Mm -hmm. Gaping more furnace that's just <laughs> ready to destroy you. Yeah. And I mean, there were, it, like, if he had ra if he'd run away, like, that probably would have been it, but he didn't. <laughs> and then contrast that with the final scene of the Rigs of Power. What well, standing totally still and defined in the face of a massive ash cloud? Yeah, I was watching you guys earlier. Not just an ash cloud. That it was a well, it was it's, ash cloud. Cloud. It's, it's, it's it's so powerful. It has its own internal weather system with lightning and yeah. everything. Um, and was, my fa uh, my favorite part. You guys pointed it out. I was watching you on on EFAP. Watch EFAP on Mahler's channel. It's very good. Um, the other people walking around around her, there was some walking towards it. Yeah, <laughs> there was some, like, they didn't tell the extras what was happening. They didn't tell the extras what was happening on the green screen. And it's like, oh my god, it's so bad. I wonder if that was because they didn't want spoilers leaking or something. They didn't want to tell these little extras that that oh, was no the origin. Uh, I, oh, sorry, think I can't. I don't want to no, no, I, you could be right. I, I that Not I think they changed their mind. I think they changed their mind because if you go back mm. to the trailer, they show that scene where she closes her eyes and there's an explosion that comes from behind her. Oh, hmm. In front of her. So uh, I think they changed it. I think they changed it. <laughs> they and they just didn't care to like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. They thought a Mount Doom origin would be a better idea. Mount Doom created by that crazy old man. You love to see it. <laughs> Well, we get uh, uh, origins of like geological features, by the way. You know, what's the origin of Mount Vesuvius? You know, like mm. it was okay. old man McGillicutty with the knife in the boardroom. <laughs> he put it in his toilet. The knife flushed. that he managed to escape with because many people didn't check the rag to go, oh, what's that? The hilt isn't here. It's a tomahawk. Whoops. So oh, well. telling you they're going to do a jaws prequel someday they're going to do it <laughs> the jaws I saw, prequel. i, I mean, saw your yeah, video maybe. gary the still you had it when you said jaws prequel <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna do it oh uh, okay we'll go that that is cool looking i hate to go away from it but uh yeah so he he goes he gets on he gets on the dragon and flies in this whole flying scene. He nearly off. falls off it. He gets yeah. close to getting flown off into this the sky. He would have been dead, but uh he manages to pull it off. Everything about the scene was fucking cool. 
like yep. absolutely yep. fucking cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, and it just felt like he doomed it. He really did. And uh, to be fair, I didn't actually know the outcome necessarily of this moment, so I was it was it was pretty tense. Yeah. And Tim's like, is this gonna work out fully? Or yeah, so I, like I fortunately get to watch this show with like very little knowledge of game of thrones or any of it so a lot of it is just me sitting there wondering what's going to happen so i wasn't quite sure what was actually going to happen uh in this This, scene this is one of the great strengths about having a show that's you know it demonstrates that it's willing to kill characters off at any moment right and so yeah like when he's facing the dragon he could have been fried completely and you so yeah you don't know what's going to happen in this instance I think that's a matter of a show earning that from you. Because you can watch another show where a character gets put and they want to play it off like they might die, but you just, you're not going to do it. Yeah, you, exactly. You know, like, I don't believe yeah. you. But here, you know, who knows? Maybe. Um, so, someone in chat's upset with this. They're like, why would you let them steal the dragon? That's stupid. And it's like, I don't think that's quite how this works. There's, <laughs> you, the dragon ride is available to even claim Vagar. There's like two. And uh, it seems the family understood it as though that was likely that, that one of them may have tried at some point. One of the daughters, one of the twins, right? She, her dragon egg hasn't hatched. So I think the show was almost trying to give us all the information we needed. She was clearly probably going to try with Vega, yeah. but she didn't step up. Her mother died, right? And you might say like, well, that's harsh. You're going to step up on literally her funeral day? And it's like, that's kind of the, the idea here. It's kind of they, the nature uh, of this world, isn't it? Eamon like, did. Well, he went for yeah. it straight away as soon as it was available, basically. Yeah. And, and I actually think Amon did, you know, like break protocol. That, that, yes. you know, if, yes. if he oh, asked, yeah. said, no, this dragon is for her. But after it's done, you, I think you can't change it. Like, you can't, any he other, knew that. Yeah. He's taken if a gamble. tried to now, you know, oh no, this is your proper rider. It's this, you know, the daughter, the girl, tra- dragon, take her. Hit the dragon, I, I get the impression, would have just fried. It's like, no, I've got my rider now. Piss yeah. off. And they can't do anything about it. Yeah, and dragons yeah. are like, they're not, you don't put them on a shelf and chain them up and keep a guard on it. It's like, they do whatever the fuck they want, especially ones that don't have a rider anymore. Especially so, uh, Vagar. Vagar can't yeah, be. Yeah, Vagar's someone you don't even get close to. You gotta be careful. So yeah, obviously, they were probably gonna try and get the girl to try out someday, but Aemon went for it, and he probably knew he could have died here. He probably knew that. There's the gamble. It was a choice he was willing to make because this is yeah, what he, he was wants. willing to and I mean, put his own life on the line to get this dragon. What we know, like clearly by the end of this episode, is that he understands the game. Like he knows, he knows what uh how yeah. this world oh, yeah. works and yeah. what he needs to do to get what he what he wants. That's what I love because they set that up. They showed that he is politically savvy already. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd marry, I'd marry my sister. It's what needs to be done. And then he, like, his brother's drunk and is like, oh, what a friggin' idiot. And he goes get Otto to sort it out. And and so you see that he is aware of the game. And now that he's willing to do some really risky things, to ah, uh, I loved it. It was so good. And yes, I, I, just, I believe that Vega was impressed probably with him because this was this was a ballsy move. And it's like, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, it's right. it's incredibly brave what he's done. So it's it's there's no getting around it. He earned uh, Vega. He earned him. Yeah, dr- dragons don't accept every like every Targaryen uh, either. Mm-hmm. They just don't. And and uh, you'll see later. I, I'll just leave it at that. You'll see you later. Uh, Vagar should be gray, not green. Amon has a sapphire eye, uh, gray dragon in his moon ice night. Damon has a red dragon. In Sunfire Light, uh, make Vagar gray. I thought he was kind of grayish. I so it seems, uh, yeah, if you'd ask me what color Vagar is, I'd be like a gray green combo, maybe. But I mean, hey, I'm not gonna like he's green, that's pretty neat, I would say. But even <laughs> if he's a little bit green, that's uh, that seems cool to me. That seems like an appropriate change with even the greens, was... yeah. I think they're, yeah. That's probably why. Oh yeah, doing. there's that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on the nose, but that's right. I'm I'm fine with it. I you know, oh, shit. Uh, with George's lore, he changes his own lore sometimes. I think they're sticking to the book as much as they can. Like there were like a lot of stuff was changed and rushed. This this whole this whole thing scenario happened at a different time, not during a funeral in the book. But some of this change, I like I said, I I I don't like the book very much. At all, so I, I'm fine with the changes in here. Uh, remember, it's an unreliable narrator sourcing three unreliable narrators. It is a maester uh, sourcing another maester, a septon, and a fool named Mushroom. 
And that's my only complaint about this show is Mushroom's not in it. I think I think mm. it will miss Mushroom. I think they should bring him in next season if any creators are watching. Don't worry about it looking like Tyrion. Nobody fucking cares. Make you know what? If you get a different actor, it won't be like Tyrion. Uh, Just, I, I, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like a really interesting character. This he is, does. Like from you what guys can handle it. You handled all these like, characters. You can do it. <laughs> we really believe in you. Thank you for the five dollars, Amish. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, all right. So this this flying scene, I was just I was like, this is why I watch this stuff, and I mean, we have to bring it up. Is is it because we've gotten so much shit? Uh, maybe. I mean, like I'm human, you know. Like I, I I'm hungry for some uh, for some good television, but I'm not willing to just like I don't know get interested in anything. I, I've got plenty of old stuff I haven't seen. I'm fine. I think this is genuinely good. Uh, I mean, like. Seriously, think about the mindset that we've had. I know for me coming in here, I was ready to rip this show apart. The marketing and build up, I was like, another friggin' rings of power. Let's go. And the first episode was good. I was like, ah. and I was not giving it any benefit of the doubt. I wasn't going in trying to like this. And look, I actually don't go into things trying to hate it either. I was like, all right, the show's out now. I'm going to judge it on its merits. And seriously, th this is done really well. Yeah, it's worth introspecting here and there. Just asking yourself, am I biased on this one? It is and then it. checking your workings. I think we've got all these streams that are hours long going through. <laughs> all of us here have hour, hours, and hours talking about why one thing is bad, one thing is good. And I feel like we're pretty consistent on uh, what kind of metrics we try to employ. And uh, see, I just want to talk about this scene now. <laughs> just, yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. This kid actor is great. This kid actor is like <laughs> legit. Yeah, he's already done. We That's it for him now. He's out. He's out, but he comes really? in swaggering, dude. He comes in like, <laughs> that's right, bitch. I just took your fucking dragon, you know? Basically. He, yeah, I got to be fair, he just did one of the most important things for his family that like has ever been done ever for any whatever. Yep. It's oh, yeah. incredible. He should okay. have a swagger. This it, it was, really no one it. asked him, no one ordered him. He took his own initiative. And oh, look, it is it is a little self-serving. He really wanted a dragon. So I guess it does help his family, but like it helps his own kind of position, you know, his own strength. Is it like because he was getting picked on for not having a dragon? It's like, yeah, now it's like pick on me now. <laughs> And yeah. as well, like he holds his own. Look, yeah, they're, they're, they're little kids. He's a little bit older, so he would have an edge. And uh, anyway, oh, we, do we get the classic? The um, a, a girl punches the boy in the face. The boy goes, ow, <laughs> and then punches the girl in the face. It's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought that was in character. He, he's, uh, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> he's uh, a Targaryen. You don't hit me, BR. No. No, no, this is a good little scrap. Uh, they all like they all attack him and they're just wailing on him. It's great. I love it. Kids will be yeah, kids. Just, that's a start at Vegas. My mother's dragon. Your mom's dead. Yep. You write yeah. it now. Mine to uh, claim. That's the thing. You should have claimed it before him, but you didn't. What he says. You should have claimed her. You should have claimed her. Yep. And then it's like, maybe your cousin could find a pig to ride. It would oh. suit you more. And see, that's the and thing. So, yeah. he's, he's bitter about even that joke, which, talk about the egg on those kids' faces at this point, right? Because they were in on that joke. <laughs> but like, also, it's an insult, you know, the pig to ride will suit you. So that gets her to try and get him. He throws her down, which triggers the sister. This is comes in, punches him, actually decks him, but then he gets up and just lays her out. It's, like, oh, yeah, it's a great wow. scene. It's just kids fighting. I just can't believe we're at this point. So she punches him. Yeah, she fight, watches it. Boom! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> and like, let's look at the choreography. Like, yeah, it's kids hitting kids. You know, like, we probably should be taking this much pleasure in it. But you feel the power behind the hit. Like they they sell it really well. That's a full on smack and and just decks. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yep, throws yeah, it down, lay, lays him out. <laughs> oh, boom! <laughs> <laughs> and I, the, like the camera angle with the head spinning around is like it's way better than anything. Rings of power. And the whole done. like, come at me again, and I'll feed you to my dragon. This is the thing about dragons. Like once they bonded to the rider, it's very much possible he could do that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and you know, yeah, he hit a girl, but he was hit first. Yeah, yeah, and so of course that moves the, the boys in. Then, like, why wouldn't they? Exactly. Nice thing, he is, as you said, he is the oldest out of these five. But when yep, you have four so on one, boots that kid down. Then the other one comes. Like Get this face poof! Oh, busted down right there. Look at that. Ouch! That hurts, man. I tell That's you, really vicious, like raw fight scene. It is. You you feel the impacts, and because they're kids as well, you're like, what? Because you know, kids be capable of this level of violence. But hey, they they've been trained for it as well. Basically, like these are the daughters of Damon, so you think they've probably been taught a thing or two. It's, it's just, uh, it's really sad. It is that this fight is happening. Um, like, doesn't it's yeah, it's just sad. But it, it's justified. All the build up. Well, yeah, and, that's the thing. It's, and, it's all been established and built up. They've set all of the. They've set up all of the pieces, and it's it's just like the tone of this episode. A lot of things are um, a lot of things are coming to a head. These things are unspoken. These um, problems that exist between these families and these people, and now yeah, it's exploding. It's it's starting to explode, and that, I guess that's the thing as well. It's like it's gonna get worse. This is uh this is kind of the beginning of this. Well, there's another subtle thing. I'm I'm pretty sure it's going to lead to something. I'm just not going to say what. But um, uh, the the yelling at the king's guard for not stopping this, which they absolutely should have. Their whole fucking job is to watch these people. So oh, yeah, he, he said like they were supposed to be asleep. It's just like yeah, but you're supposed to catch shit like that. That's your job. Yeah. I yeah, and Kristen and so Kristen Cole has just gotten insolent as a motherfucker. He starts yeah. like, well, <laughs> you don't usually have to like fight, you know, keep princes from fighting each other. I don't give a shit, it's your job, you know. And like, and then you can see the Lord Commander fucking looking at him like, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. You're, yeah, you know, you're making me look bad. And then uh, Corliss later gets mad at his house guard, too. Um, but just remember that that scene where uh, Kristen Cole went evil, man. <laughs> Like really fucking evil. <laughs> so the 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 four kids start wailing on Eamon, and he gets pinned right. But then he like he actually gets out of it. He kicks one yeah. off and then throws one to the side of the, the other. It's They're just, wailing yeah. them right now. Yeah. Yeah, and blood's getting drawn uh, here and there, and yeah, they're hurting people. each other. So then uh, eventually he pulls up a rock. Uh, you know, I'm gonna try to. I want to. Yeah, which is this is how uh, things escalate. Oh. This is literally how yeah, things that's, escalate. That's why I was getting real nervous. It's like, uh oh, what's gonna happen here? Yeah, and then oh, oh. cold blooded man. I'm calling him Lord Strong. Yeah, nice. Oh yeah, he's like, so what, proud what of himself. Because this is the thing: the character is like he's got pretty strong knowledge, pretty good choice in making. He's pretty brave. He's like. You got. Yeah. He's got a lot of characteristics that are. Uh... Like, re- well, exactly. especially after being made fun of in the last episode, I presume that that's a dynamic that's common. And now look at him; he's got the biggest dragon. That is the biggest dragon, right? It looked enormous. It and is. Look, it's the biggest dragon uh, in Westeros. Yes. You know yeah, there is an underbone well. because those two boys were part of the teasing. You know the yeah, yeah uh, exactly. And now his dragon could now be he's both got of a, their dragons yeah, exactly. if it wanted yeah. to. And so it's almost like a bullied, you know, kid getting a little, little bit of, you know, like, uh, you know, getting his backbone and put standing up for himself. So I also get a bit of satisfaction out of that. He goes too far, of course, but uh, there's that undercurrent there as well. And oh, you're right, man, Mauler, like the 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 wording that he picks, like, of course that would set him off because after he says, you know, Lord Strong, he's still holding the other brother and has a rock. And so the other one, who he just called Lord Strong, pulls out the knife and it just escalates. Uh, yeah, so they, these kids loved Lord Strong. The, that was yeah. the guy who looked after him. They looked up to him. He was a role model. And then they find out he's probably their dad. And they don't get to express that at all. So no. not only do they need to hide that, they're being shamed for being it. Oh, you're right. Gosh, that would sting so much. And so you can and see who's exactly. fault is that? Not this. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's not their fault. Oh my goodness. It's, There's uh, so mom and much in the team. Yep, Rhaenyra and yep. uh so oh, team Rhaenyra. Oh, listen, I'm I'm rooting for the blacks because uh of Damon, and I can say I'm rooting for the blacks, you know. So. <laughs> Well, I'm with the greens at the moment, and Eamon seems to be on the green side. So I'm like, I want chaos. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say if Eddie, if I had to choose, I'm on the greens, but I like lots of people on both sides. Okay? <laughs> no, I, uh, I I like Otto. I never like, especially reading the book. I never thought I'd like Otto, but I like Otto. I mean, I really cool. like Otto. He's cool. Like Otto, yeah. <laughs> Um, the, and the, the actor helps a lot, I think, as well. So excited to see him! Oh back. And and speaking uh, of see the, him on the throne, that's gonna be so cool. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, the kid they got to play Amon here, he he just looks like kind of a little shit. So like, well cast, uh, well done. Look at that smirk. He's like, fuck yeah. Yeah, and he, he's holding himself <laughs> really well. That's right. I mean, he's toying with them physically and emotionally. He's got all the cards. Now look at oh, he's gonna go kid crazy. No. <laughs> Pulls out the knife. It's like the knife. Knife, mate. And look, he fight he fights off a kid with a knife. He dodges it and then get smacks back yep, to Eamon. Dude, those are some moves, Eamon. Like, like and he didn't flinch either. I mean, he did flinch with a jagged, so now it's, it's a knife. It's just, it's... Well, you could argue he's not even with a knife, he's like, oh, I can take this easily, but that's almost the, the, they catch him off because of that. The sand mm -hmm. is not something he's gonna see coming. Yep, yep. <laughs> Quite literally. Like, <laughs> and also just that they're working together. He's on his own. That's yeah. that's also right because now he's like, I got the you know, and he do, he does hold back, but you can tell he's threatening. And this this was another good choice by them as well. He looks over to the other side of the room to see the the girls who are afraid. He's enjoying the power he has right now. Mm -hmm. He's missing that there's another kid moving around. Yep, the other one grabs the knife, but then the one at the nurse throws. Oh, the oh right. Flash! Wow, wow, what a pause. What a pause, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And there goes the eye. <laughs> oh, shit. So, I mean, this fight is actually really well choreographed. What the it hell? Is. <laughs> Nine year olds. <laughs> hey, Amazon only had a billion dollars, guys. <laughs> Like, literally, the last episode had Galadriel riding upside down on a horse and an orc explodes with her being too far away for the sword to have reached him. And then oh, well, there was also um the part when they were fighting on the roof of the uh, of the tavern in the village and they the the, the orc who threw the, the rope at uh, Elfman, the they, they, he jumped thing. off as they were falling down. Yeah, the orc he just, just jumped, jumped off the roof them. for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty great. And then he stands there haplessly for like two seconds as the camera shifts around while yeah, Elfman trying to get up. Uh, I recommend if you if you go through slowly on Rings of Power. This is where we just went through this scene slowly and we're, we're seeing why it's well put together. Went through slowly on Rings of Power. We saw that there was a there was an orc that falls near the camera when he was supposed to fall <laughs> past it, right? And then come yeah, back into yeah. frame. So he gets up. And then runs away to go behind the camera to come no, back in on the other side. Yeah, like he kind of shuffles around. Uh, you, just you guys fucked attacking. it up and you didn't fix it. You just left you it had, like that. You had all the money to just reshoot it, but reshoot you didn't. It. Yeah. No, I, I, saw, uh, I, I guess I was watching a lot of you guys today because I saw that part and uh, Disbrew was right. Yeah, they were. he was running around the cameraman to come back <laughs> into the speed. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I was I was baffled by it. I was like, why in the world would, it, oh, would the extra wow. do that? And then Disbrew was like, it would make sense if you think about it. This way. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything. Gosh, I'm totally doing a fight scene autopsy on that episode. A battle scene autopsy. You're you really going to rip too. that one apart. Oh, oh my God, you have to. <laughs> oh dude just um yeah a lindil getting pulled off his fucking horse that by orcs that's ridiculous yeah it's, and, I mean, and there's like four of them and none of them had a weapon none. Nope. <laughs> they were just, like stabbing him in the gut while they're trying to grab him i mean like just grab your dude dirt. gary one of the what are the orcs is clearly trying to saddle the horse it's like calm down horsey it's like it's okay <laughs> They were so worried about hurting horses. I get like I love how they showed the the horse that was tripped was okay. They took like valuable time out of the show to see the horsey get hey, back. Look, I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> I care more about the animals than I do about the people. I, I know. I mean, the horse was the best actor in the fucking show. Okay, so let's give credit to the horse. But uh, it tripped really good. The horse and the pyroclastic flow. Those were my two favorite things in the in the episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I would love the pirate classic flow if it actually did its job and killed everyone. And like next episode, my favorite gonna character be like, point, you yeah. had one job. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it killed all the nameless yeah, characters. Yeah. Don't worry, Shad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've got one week of pretending it did. Okay. Pretending it fried her, 
got a little clip in front of my video <laughs> that was totally my idea by the way so uh all right god this is such a good scene oh that oh the kids oh, the ah! yeah oh that was good hey man they're strong boys oof that blood yeah yeah and look this is appropriate this is a like yep. game of thrones property yeah you, like the glory is expected and unlike lord of the rings oh, they, where they have like the blood spewing out of the eye not lord like of the rings it's a power, it, it just, and they hold it for ages yeah so, this by the way i felt really bad for the king's guard here because it's like dude you are in oh, so much God. trouble <laughs> i it's went to have a piss and they're killing each other what the fuck man <laughs> Yeah, this is one of those like I'm gonna. My job is at stake now because you guys are just. Why are you doing this? Why are you killing each other? What the hell? Like, I know. What is my job anymore? Like, and what does he say in the first episode when Renera comes back from the dragon? I'm very relieved you're back. I like having my head attached to my body. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, he turns around for just a couple of minutes, and it's not like someone trips, scrapes their knees. Like they're trying to kill each other. Dude, and what? Going like on? Graham McTavish is a great actor, by the way. Dude is fucking good in everything. Even in Stupid Witcher, he was good uh, in season two. So, like, the guy's solid. He's He was in uh, Outlander 2. Hmm. And The Hobbit. Oh. He was in, um, wasn't he in, I think he was in Uncharted 2. I think he played, um, uh, oh my god, I can't believe I've forgotten his name. The villain in that. And he played a guy called Cutter in the third game. This like this really oh, the stereotypical Cockney British guy. Oh yeah, I don't. I couldn't tell you anything about the movie. Like that's I, you like know what? That. I watched it and I couldn't tell you anything about it either. I forgot it completely. It is it is an incredibly forgettable, generic, bland movie. It was so like, bad. Came out this year and and yet it feels like I don't even remember watching it, but I did, and it wasn't very fun. Oh, that's so, yeah. oh. That's right. Uh, yeah, he's a great actor. Uh, he's the saint of killers in uh, in Preacher, which was like the uh, good first season. It went to shit after the first season. Okay, but uh, yeah, he he was a the saint of killers, one of my favorite characters. Uh, so now everybody's got to go talk to each Get other. The scene. The this is probably the the standout scene for the whole episode. I think. Yep. Oh my goodness. This yep. is just like this scene was I, fantastic. I loved everything about this, guys. I I, I multiple times I was just like, Whoa! like like audible reactions from me. You, the, the, oh. It's the whole like the tension can be cut with a knife. It's it's so thick, <laughs> oh, yeah. everything. One of the greatest not you know, like the, to be a king's guard in Westeros, you need to be one of the best of the best. Period. So he's pissing himself right now. Uh, and then Sir Christian Cole's like, Well, the King's Guard has never had to defend princes for princes. He's like, Shut the fuck up. Oh, uh, why did you say that? <laughs> You're not helping. Mm. Look at the look at Viserys' face. What'd you fucking say? Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing again. It's like that's that's unusual from Viserys. That's how very invested he is right now, and how this is insanely terrible. How did this happen? It's the face I get when my kid, well, on the very rare occasion, one of my kids talks back to me. Very rare. What the fuck you just say? <laughs> say that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, look at his face. The king's got in the back of there. Like, it's like, yeah, just like, stop talking, idiots. <laughs> well, I totally understand why you got all upset when you just fucked a princess once. Jesus. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the implication here is like, Allison is like, is there a chance the eye won't be gone forever? It's like. Yeah, <laughs> um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, yeah. but uh, <laughs> come on, we all got moms when we got hurt, you know. Oh yeah, and dude, so this is act different. Yeah, like what if it's so interesting, Allison, in this scene, right? Because yes, she goes too far, but she's a mother who just had her her own son lose an eye, and so the fact that she flips out so far, I was like almost makes me like oh. her more because it's an expression of how much she cares for her children. And uh, it's like, uh, I'm, Shad, I'm, I'm, tell everyone how serious an injury like that would be back then. Like it wouldn't be just losing an eye. You could die. 
oh yeah, infection could take you out like in, massively, and, and this this would impact so many things in someone's life. Yeah, like, like marriage prospects is it would be considered deformed and other things. Uh, I and then it's also just hard like depth. There goes your depth perception, so it'd be really yep. hard to accommodate for that in battle and things. So I expect this guy still becomes a badass warrior. Um, uh, so. Well, and- it's not even just that this is what I agree with you. I, I find her mm. actions completely justified uh, from a writing standpoint and as a mother, as well as uh, she's tired of following the rules and not getting <laughs> anything she's supposed to get. And everyone else yes. can fuck around. Someone can literally take her son's eye and get away with it. And this is a breaking point. She couldn't handle it anymore. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah. And so she steps too far. She slaps his brother, which is, I love that. Like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's what I would do to my older son if something had to my younger son. But you come over here. What you, where were you? <laughs> uh, but I get that part. Uh, and then um, I, I, if I can catch it, like all this shit's going down, and Damon's like, kick him back. <laughs> oh, dude, Damon's great right in this whole scene. Smirking. The only yeah. action he takes is preventing Kristen from getting to protect uh, Allison. Yep. Very Gosh, specific like, move. I'm re I'm rewatching it, right? And uh, the actress, Allison's reaction when the Mesa said his eye is lost for good, is she she just like gasped in horror. Like the delivery of the, her reaction then is just odds oh, on point. She cast have been pretty much everybody has been. No, there hasn't been any shitty acting in this. Uh yeah. I mean, maybe some average, but there hasn't been any well, Man, the- I, I just saw Viserys' reaction as well when it said his eyes lost, and he's just—he's he, like he know oh, the dread in him. He knows where this is going. He's like, ah, oh, no, I can't catch oh. a break. I can't catch a break. I'm losing <laughs> limbs and fingers. I got leprosy. Yeah, freaking idiots around here just want to like tear the. Oh, just kill me now. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't say that now. The only uh, thing that could destroy the house of the dragon is itself. That's the quote that starts this whole show off. Oh, like when, when Corliss and Rainey's come in. What is the meaning of this? That was when Mama was like, oh, things are getting uh, Dude, this is, uh, what an echo as well of uh, Game of Thrones episode two where uh, Joffrey's bitten by the wolf because he threatens to kill almost uh, Arya. with his sword. And then it gets uh, the butcher's boy, right? And all that stuff. And then the butcher's boy is killed. And then you have the Starks and the Lannisters are demanding that Robert meet out justice. And I'm pretty sure Cersei asks, eye for an eye, uh, or, or at least the equivalent. Now that Joffrey's hand, he's got a permanent wound, the, the wolf has to be executed. And Robert just mm-hmm. says, yeah, do it. Uh, but obviously Viserys says no to this this request. Yeah. Interesting comparisons. You know? Lots of parallels. You're going to see a lot. You're going to see a lot. But yeah, because neither Viserys nor Robert wanted anything to have to do. They don't want to have to make that decision. They just don't want it. They don't want any of this. They just want everyone to get along. Gosh, we, we get so many good reactions. Is it Renera, the princess? She comes in and then this is the first she sees of her, her boys and one's got a broken nose. And so her reaction is also horror. It's like, what, what happened? Oh. Hmm. Does Viserys have more balls than Bobby B? In some ways, yeah. In some ways, yeah, no. this is the thing. That I, I would never. This is what I mean. I, I don't. I I want to give more credit to both shows. I don't want to summarize the series or Bobby B with one word like weak or headstrong or you know arrogant or useless or idiotic like just any of these. Because a lot of people like to. It's like there's a lot more going on for both of them. Robert doesn't want to make the decision because he doesn't want the Lannisters and the Starks to hate each other. But at the same time, he needs to make one. I think he just leaves the tent after a while, right? He just doesn't want to make the decision. Uh, except he says like you know you can have what you want, but. Viserys here, if someone said he was weak, it's like, no, he he makes his position clear. You will not take uh, the other kid's eye. That's not happening. And all of you are going to calm the fuck down. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> His decision's made. And if someone yeah. was to say, like, yeah, but it doesn't satisfy everybody, it's like, there is no decision that satisfies everybody in this room. <laughs> that's not a thing. <laughs> yep. It's not a thing that's ever going to happen. I, like, I actually find many elements of the king to be quite strong but he also is gentle and kind and he wants you know peace he just wants peace you know ah uh. yeah and he actually pushes to get the answer he's looking for this is another classic example i brought this up uh, on our efap episode i was like it just seems indicative to me that questions that are avoided 
are often ignored, like in Rings of Power, that happens several times. But in this one, we keep trying to get away from who told Amond that they're bastards. And uh, mm -hmm. he keeps bringing it back. He's like, nope, give me the fucking answer. <laughs> Tell oh, me who it was. And the answer, and that's another time I think I was just like, oh, oh, oh I got me, it got a sound out of me. Everyone because... was waiting for him to say it was his mum, which would have just, yeah. just, that detonates the whole room. Yeah. But instead, yes. he passes, like, he kicks the can down the road. It could but, still but, lead to her, but it goes to he, Eamon no, first. His line, is, uh, exactly, but when it goes to his brother, and uh, the brother's answer is what I, when I get Yeah, the, the brother's answer is great. Because that's just like, the explodes. I it's I it's such a oh, powerful line because it's like no one had to tell me. It's bloody obvious. <laughs> yes, <laughs> basically, I was just like. Which, oh. to be fair, that really did save Allison. Uh, yeah, from because yeah, it's like everyone can see it. That answer makes it so. <sighs> and then oh, just everyone looking around. After I know that, that I talk when Fringy was saying how tense this episode is. Like like yeah, the build up, the waiting for the answer. Who told you? He demands it, and, and yeah. yeah Oh, <laughs> it was just yeah, and also was... for those who say the series is weak, he says anyone, anyone talking about the idea that Rhaenyra's sons of bastards will have their tongues cut out. That's anyone, uh... <laughs> and he looks at he looks at Allison when he says that. Like, oh. Yeah, and, and and you know why he's saying it? He believes yes. that if that becomes truth and accepted, the whole family is crumbling. That's it. It's, Everything's it's dead. And then you'll see other houses going for the throne, dragons or not, you know? Well, and and it's just something to keep in mind that Viserys knows about the 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 uh the what's the prophecy, right? Like the that's something that's informing his uh the way that he handles everything. He knows something that everybody else doesn't. I worry though, by the way, that this is the last episode we will be seeing a coherent Viserys. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. I, like we've gotten so much more Viserys than I expected. I thought he was actually dead two episodes ago. He's I still, didn't. Yeah, I didn't think he still would still be around. Him. But I'm glad yeah, he is. Praise I, him every episode. The actor, the writing, <laughs> it's great. Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, I know where they're ending this, and uh, it's going to be. Whoo, We'll yeah, see. I've seen a couple of comments in chat today. Like, Maul's gonna love the way this ends, and I'm just like, is it tragic? <laughs> like, because I do not have tragic endings. No spoilers, chat. No Don't spoilers. anyone say it. It's yeah, it's gonna all end happily ever after. Everybody, uh, mm -hmm. everybody, okay. Uh, Allison and Renera kiss and make up. Uh, their kids remain friends. There's tons of dragons and the White Walkers dance in the little field full of daisies. Become snowmen. Yeah, it's already. It's already been mentioned, but I think part of what makes this scene so great is knowing that there is no outcome that will make everybody happy. Somebody's losing here. And by somebody, it's more like a lot of people are losing, like a whole family, a whole side of this conflict. There's no seems good to, resolution. The series has always opted for a compromising silence with a lot of this. That, uh, he can't the, hear. Yeah, this yeah. is the first time it really feels like his hand was forced. And it's not in the sense of he's cornered and now he must make it. It's more of a he can't do his usual solution. He has to Not do something more this time. He knows that, and he does. Yeah. So there's Otto. Good shot of Otto right there. Uh, Always looking Otto. mischievous. Yeah. The, 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 the ending shot of Otto in this scene, I loved. I was just and, and like I actually wrote down, you know, what I felt he was feeling, and the next episode confirms it completely. But I wait until we get there because there's so much in this scene to talk about. So there's uh, the accusations uh, of being a bastard, and it came from him. So Viserys asks Aemon, like, hey, where'd you hear, hear that? He rats out his brother. Um, <laughs> and it, like Viserys says, yeah, it's not going to be an eye for an eye or anything. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. And Allison is just like about to fucking go off. So she kind of goes off. And he's smirking right there. Well, because he's going to come out with a line very soon that I think summarizes his character so well, and it's so interesting for him to have said, because it makes you really think, uh, at least for Eamon's perspective on all of this. Uh, Prince Eamon must be sharply questioned, and Damon is just like, hmm. Yeah, how's all this going to play out? Maybe, yeah, they'll yeah. Kill all, maybe they'll kill each other, and I'll get the throw. Renera claims that, you know, calling her children bastard is the highest of treason. And so... She's just gone full blown defensive, but calling it treason, she's essentially saying that the you know 
whoever is responsible of this is worthy of death. And her play here is to get the sons to admit that it's the mother. So the, you know, the queen, Alison would get executed. And so Rhaenyra basically does a play here to potentially get Rhaenyra executed and accused of treason. I mean, Alison, Alison, right? yeah, yeah. You, Alison, it's, it's Alison. smart, yeah. It's well, and, and and it did it just it, um, Alison's response is perfect. She's like over an insult. My son has lost an eye. Like in terms of treason, I think we know who's uh, outplayed the other here. <laughs> and then she just goes, "Where's Sir Lanor?" I wonder. Look at the look at her face. Uh, oh, that, that was uh, the subtext. The so subtext. It's all every. It's not everyone's minds. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. isn't here. That's interesting. Doesn't exactly. even care about his kids. Obviously, we need a <laughs> shot of Corliss after a line like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just because they're part of it too. Ah, oh, that's so good, man! <laughs> like every line just leads to something powerful, intriguing, and you're hanging on what happens next. God, he he comes so close to saying it's Allison. I'll yeah, Gary, <laughs> careful, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, just hit the 15 button whenever you're worried, <laughs> right? We know, <laughs> Father. And it's in all the glances, because as, as everyone, everyone knows. Oh, look at Viserys' uh, face. Look at him. Like, my. Oh. Oh. Patty, my Gosh. man, you have risen yeah. quite far in my estimation <laughs> of your abilities. <laughs> yes, he has. He's fantastic. Yep. Smart move taking this role, dude, and uh, doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I'll just be completely honest. When I found out he was going to be the king character, I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> <And> <laughs> like... I'm just rewatching this. When they ask where, um, you know, the 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 father, but it's not the father, but, you know, where he is, and uh, Alison's line, entertaining his young squires, no doubt. <laughs> oh. Oh. And that's the, that's what I meant about like you can just you can joke about it, but like if someone was to actually corner, it's like what are you saying by that? And it's like nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> I ain't saying anything. I'm just saying he's having some fun. I don't know, playing yeah, cards. Yeah, that's he, all. You, we all know he spends times with his, you know his, his his squires. And yeah, this by the way, <laughs> this this shot combined with we are family, like that is his perspective. It is no one else's. Exactly. He's like, I want all of us to get along, and I'm sorry, but all of these people are in circles that are much smaller than yours. Like, and they refuse to expand it. It's uh, and it's so interesting to show many people here have so many different stakes in all of this. Too many Targaryens. Uh... Yeah. So, so the son's line when he says, "The father, we know father." It's like, we know father. Everyone knows, and he's yep. just, oh. <laughs> Because the implication is that no one had to tell me it's obvious. Ah, oh, that just hangs in the air. And uh, that's when it's like, that, that's as, as out and open as that is, have been said. I'm not sure if it says more openly later on, but wow. <laughs> no, and, and uh, I think Fringy or Mahler said it earlier. I mean, that, that relieves Allison of any responsibility or least reasonable mm -hmm. doubt. Uh, it mm -hmm. was. I think it was accidentally the smartest thing he did he could possibly do. Yes. Yeah, because I'm not sure if he did it on purpose. Um, no. but Aegon, I mean it worked. A the way they're portraying him is I guess kind of in the book where he's not like he's a he's you know, he likes to fuck and you know get drunk and that's it. Like uh, you know, he's he but he, he doesn't really want to rule. Like that's yeah, not the thing. He just wants to he wants to be a prince. He just wants to go because I would argue Eamon's decision to not say Allison and instead say uh, Eamon was very deliberate. It was a really yeah. smart move. He probably came up with it as he was thinking in that moment. How do I escape? This isn't an escape. It's a temporary reprieve, and that's the best I've got. I'll play that card. And he did. And, and it was I'll a really smart choice. Is my brother. <laughs> and yeah. He did, yeah. And he knew <laughs> that passing it over to him can still get Allison done. Which isn't that great? That 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 tells you that he values protecting his mother. He knows that telling them that would have killed her, or at least gotten her in serious trouble. Yeah. It also throws his brother under the bus, which is something he might want as well, because he doesn't like his brother. Yeah, um, yeah. The brother saying that Eamon's saying what he did, then it's like, yeah, it's up to your interpretation. He could have been protecting his mom, but I think it's more likely he's saying the truth. Yeah, everyone knows. Everyone knows. Oh. <laughs> The and then he says, just look at them. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, 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 oh. No, it gets, it gets, yeah, it gets better later. But um, so Allison's had enough. She's all eye for an eye, and she orders Kristen Cole to take out the prince's eye. She's all the prince can choose. You know, my, my son didn't get that choice. The prince could choose. And Kristen Cole's about to do it. And Viserys is like, no, the king says no. And Kristen Cole says, as your sworn protector. And like, even like Otto's like, holy shit. <laughs> no, well, so what I got from that is I think when she gives the command, Cole is like, okay, I might actually be cutting the, the eye out of a prince in a second. This is going to be. And then, uh, it, it, the, the the series the counter command which is when they show the frame of uh the lord commander which is like it's the lord commander now versus cole potentially and then she says you you're sworn to me and he says as your protector meaning yeah. i protect you i don't attack people for you exactly i think that's that's what it meant which is a very wise thing to say in this moment because he could have for a second you got himself killed oh I, I i think Kristen might have done it but and never got presented that opportunity. I think I'm willing to believe that he's smart enough to know that he can deal serious damage to those bastards that he personally hates, even though it's not their fault, in better ways than this. Like, he's not just oh, going to yeah. walk over there and try to take an eye out. That's not going to happen. So she gets thwarted, obviously. Damon's just watching. Look at it, just watching it all go down. <laughs> uh, he, he can choose which eye to keep, a privilege... He did not grant my son. He's getting angry. Uh, do you understand? Stop, woman! <laughs> and uh, no, nobody's going to stop. And then she grabs the doomed, cursed knife. <laughs> the <laughs> knife that makes everything worse. <laughs> and that's, uh, it's, it's exactly what I think Mola said. It's that, that she has followed the rules and never it's never a good yeah. outcome for her. And this is like the final straw pushed her a little bit too over the edge. Her son's lost an eye, and it's an outcome that just seems deeply unfair to her, so she just breaks. She snaps. And she snaps. Uh, we know she's going too far, but I find it interesting Absolutely, now when I'm yeah. looking at it that um, Renera, when she said the highest of trees and who caused it, who said it, trying to get it to be pointed to her, was actually, you know, uh, Renera trying to get Allison killed. It's like, holy crap. It's... Oh. And like uh, it's a high uh, stakes, uh, yeah, high stakes situation. And this is why I was uh, aiming as MVP. The line he comes out with at the peak of this, like you know, the bitterness, anger, and actual violence happening. The um, that that tells you he's almost a mini auto already. The political savviness is amazing. <laughs> the fact that it's like, don't you want justice for the eye? Like, look what's happening. And he's like, I got a dragon. Like that's that's my exchange here, and it's not just any dragon. Yeah. Either. No, um, it's the dragon. It almost to me, I'm willing to read into it to this degree that he's like, Mom, let's withdraw. All right. Yeah, let's calm down, Mom. It's cool. I have I'm a dragon. About it, but you shouldn't be the, <laughs> making a know? German spectacle of yourself. Let's just, but it seems like a nudge of like, we've got Vega. Okay. No, yeah, like if I die here, <laughs> it had to happen for me to get that dragon and make that choice again. So just drop it. Uh, and uh, it's it's. I think Otto would have been proud as fuck of him saying that. <laughs> like, well, well, he like, was. But, like, we got to get to this still because when he says that, it stills on Otto, and he looks friggin' proud. Like that's what I wrote yeah, that down. That's... I paused it. I was like, Otto looks friggin' proud. He loves. It makes it. me wonder. It makes me wonder, especially when we see that scene earlier where he was really upset with Aegon. Meanwhile, Aemon's making these smart plays. Just makes me wonder what that means for the future. Yeah. yeah. So we got a $50 Canadian peso super chat. Thank you very much. Says by doing weekly reaction reviews for this show, we've learned there's a large portion of normies. Normie types. Yeah. Yeah, of course. There always is. Oops. Uh, normie types. We can't stand uh, that. Can't stand that. We love Allison and Otto. They accept Renera D writing. Glad to see a portion of the internet that can enjoy the chaos. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. Was it were we on like we learned to like Jamie Lannister later on in Game of Thrones, right? I fucking hated him in the first season. I couldn't stand him. Wanted him to get decapitated for pushing Bran out. But then you know, a little sympathy for the guy later on. He gets he goes on a redemption arc till he gets fucking stupid at Game of Thrones season eight. Sorry to bring it up again, but <laughs> uh yeah, I've I, I, you know, I the the one thing is there's no clear cut 
good guy, guy in quotes, in this show. And I, and I don't know if that's going to be a problem later or not. That, that will have to, that remains to be seen. But right now there's compelling characters who just want to take each other off the board. And that's good enough for me right now. I don't know. I was I, surprised by um, when I saw the reactions to episode six, like how many people hate Allison. Um, that was surprising. Cause I, I think it's, it's, um, this show has a bunch of very, what's that? No, no. Oh, sorry. I thought that hurts. Uh, like this show has a set of very well realized characters with different traits and goals. Um, and, and they're like, it's, it's, it's really great to see them clash. Like it makes for great drama. And it, it just seemed like, uh, there was a failure to recognize Allison's perspective and like why it exists and how it's well informed from her point of view, based on everything that's happened up until that point. Like that's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like you're not, you're not recognizing the good writing here. It's a shame. It was the same yeah, with, uh, um, with Cole those- as well. For those who are like, can't be supporting Allison after this, I just feel like, I really don't feel like this is that far away from a very reasonable reaction, considering the situation. His son oh, had yeah. his eye gouged, gouged out. Like, this is not... Mm-hmm. You're not going to be this that is, rational um, in a moment like this. Yeah, a mother, like, I see perfectly in line for a mother, flipping out, seeing that her son lost an eye, almost died. Uh, at, like, holy... And she th- actually thinks, like, she said, you know, they brought a knife to an ambush. They tried to kill him. And so she thinks it even went even further. And then weighing that against what um, Renera does at the end... Cause holy crap, that's dark. Um, <laughs> oh right, yeah. Uh, well, um, so what else we'll get happens there. in this scene? Uh, the, oh yeah, well, so so this the interesting part is uh, Allison seemingly goes to stab Rhaenyra out of desperation at this point. Her arm. Well, is... I thought no, I thought she was going for the to get the eye from the sun, and then Rhaenyra goes in the way and stops. Her. I thought she was. Um... I was, I was unclear. I need to see it again. I wasn't sure exactly where the knife was heading. Uh... Well, I mean, technically, Renera's already standing in front of the children, and so... Uh, um, well, she turned Allison around, had... so uh, Allison was going for one of the kids. Definitely going for one of the kids. Well, but at this point, she's even still, like, trying to bring the knife down, presumably, on, on her. Even yeah. Rhaenyra. Yeah. 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 And she's, Agreed. yeah, very desperate at this point. It's all coming out, and... Uh, yeah, we'll see it in a sec, but just uh, Kristen oh, makes some. Yeah, move. The, the, yeah. The kid um, even screams. The kid's terrified. That uh, yeah, yeah, I think absolutely it's absolutely terrified. And remember, um, he just made clear Kristen is her protector. He's on the move, and Damon <laughs> stops him. Yeah, yeah. There. Uh. Uh-uh. Nope. Let the girls work it out. Yeah, and that's the the fascinating one is the uh, the Lord Commander. He's like, everybody stay back. Do not yeah. attack either of them. It's the queen and the, the queen to be. I know. Do not kill like, either exactly. of them. Yeah. The if you, queen. yeah. If you like killed either one of them, your head's dead. Oh, oh God. Like, you would never. You yeah, know. that's right. He, he, this is the most stressful day for him. He's like, please <laughs> don't kill each other. Nobody exactly. killed him. Yeah. Like, what oh is God. he to do to resolve this situation <laughs> other than just let them figure it out? Yeah, you just yeah, gotta hope that they calm down. Yeah. And then she says, like, What have I done but my duty? She essentially says, uh, Doesn't think she's the only character that hasn't like broken several beats along the way. She stayed like fully. This is the first time that she's gone nuts, basically. And it's and it's a big I mean, it's in front of everybody as well. Like it's yep. uh it's a mistake, <laughs> like it's a big screw up. Uh, Cole's statement is an interesting contrast between uh, Marin Trent and Game of Thrones, who unquestionably unquestioningly did whatever Joffrey told him to do. Yep, Marin Trent was a piece of shit. Yeah, he was, he, he was one of the worst shit. people in all the Game of Thrones. All the Game of Thrones. Uh, Look at the acting, even in the still frames. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Her lines like, you know, what have I done but my duty forever upholding kingdom, the family, the law? Oh, it's really good. Oh, and while, you flout, while, while, while you flout all to do as you please. True. She's speaking truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even Otto is like, please don't stab her. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, would, that would be bad. Uh, and yeah, she- yeah. Because Otto just yeah says release the blade, Alison. Feel entitled. 
exhausting, <laughs> wasn't it? Hiding beneath the cloak of your own righteousness. This Which, whole by the way, I think is a great line too. Allison has been using the fact that she is right this whole time when really it's like at this point, you, you're you not really, <laughs> you've got a bit beyond that now, haven't you? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, because of course I mean, she's human. She has her own desires underneath all this. Yeah. Well, yeah, Rhaenyra's right. Like it's, yeah, they, it's, well, kind of right. Like they see you as you are. It's like, yeah, this is a much truer reflection of how you feel. Um, and she yeah. stabs her. Straight up stabs her in the arm. Mm -hmm. Slice. And as he said, Valyrian steel is not a joke. That cuts real quick, really good. Yep. And uh, yeah, poor Viserys, just like yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is Amon right here. Don't mourn me, mother. Fair exchange. Fair exchange. Badass. You mean this? He made oh. quite an impression in this episode. He really did. But I gained a dragon. Boom. I wish to see more of this character already. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to say the name of the show. Okay, there's just comparisons that can be made. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could we go back? I want to see the still of Otto after you know the line. I've lost an eye, but gained a dragon. Because I was just like, ah, oh, hell yeah. But it might take a bit to find it. We don't want to get copyright struck. Can I go back? Is it? He'll be back, back right? Oh, I think that's it. Oh, you had it in the preview window. It's close. Right. Well, there you go. This is close. Well, just go forward 15. You probably get it. Oh, maybe it's too far. In. Hmm. Too far. This is this is the tight rope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, how about I gained a dragon? There's so many pauses. Stop the pauses. Uh, she just went, oh, shit. Yeah, because yeah, everyone's now picking up now on what. realizing. Yeah. Oh, look at Leah Otto. He's just like, yeah. my boy, my boy. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> he's got the, and so, like, he's trying to hide a smile, but you can see it there. It's so well acted. That Isn't that interesting so... that, like, because this conflict is so personal. It's about, like, how it's upset everybody, what's happened to each individual. And then just the reminder, like, what was this all about? Oh, yeah, he got a dragon. Like, oh, that's a big and, deal. And this is a fact that some of them may not even have really acknowledged yet. Vagar is a big, big dragon. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big dragon. The power, the balance of power has shifted in this conflict that we all realize exists. And it's not like there's no ignoring it anymore. Not just a statement of reality that that's how much it benefits their side, but also this acts as a thing to satisfy his his now going nuts mother. Again, it's a smart move from Eamon to be like. It's chill, mum. We're okay. We'll be fine. We, yeah. We're good. You could even dig into it as far as him saying, we're going to annihilate them with Vagar. Don't worry. Yep. <laughs> so proud. Look at him right there. Uh, we got $20 from Josh Kelsey. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We're almost through the episode here. This is such a good one. Uh, what the rogue Amond has done Oh yeah, that's how he described it. Yeah. Is winning in winning Vagar to our side. Uh, da, 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 da. The boy was right. It's worth a thousand times the price he paid. And so it really there's is. reason to think that Otto may not have actually connected those things yet, and it was it was able to spell it out. And he was just like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> And, I mean, and I wouldn't even blame him because of the fact that we're dealing with a, he's had his eye taken out so everyone's focused on what happens as a result of that and a lot of people have forgotten why did the eye come out the kids were oh, fighting yeah. why Small were they fighting dragon. because he got the dragon yeah and uh, Otto tells uh, Allison hey I saw something in you I didn't think was there and now you're ready to play the game of yeah Thrones. that's really <laughs> interesting too completely yeah. subversive everyone yeah. expects Otto to chew her out but he's like it's good to know it's you've like, got that element in there the yeah, fire. he's like You've got the strength to do this. Because I suppose, out of the... in a sense, he wouldn't have. Uh, he would have had a lot of time away from her. So there's a lot that's changed about her in those mm -hmm. ten years that he didn't get to observe. It's, it's cool to have those two in a scene together again because you can see that change. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's arguable too. This was not. This isn't a moment where she needs to be chewed out. Uh, 
She knows exactly what's happened. This is a very big low moment for her. So I think it's a tactical choice to tell her that as well. Yep. Yeah, because everything he everything he says is tactical. Once your kid, once you think your kid has learned their lessons, no sense in piling on at that point. Um, so uh, Leonor finally wants to be a good husband. She's like, okay, I should have been there. I should have been around. I'm sorry. And then, uh, just I'm by the way, on what you just said, the, once the kid knows their lesson, you just no need to, because that's what he does when he walks in, right? She says, like, go on, say a piece. And he's like, which piece would that be? So yeah. he lets her explain detailed what she did was wrong. And then he's like, right, so you got that. So now I can praise you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you learned a lesson. Good. Uh, so Lenore wants to, missed all this, felt bad. He was knee deep in hot D. And uh, then Renera, I'm just going to, because this is just a quiet little scene that's setting something well, else. If I could highlight the best part of this scene where he says, I should have been there. And she said, that should be the words of our house. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. It's great. Um, so Renera is like, I've got a better idea. I've got a better idea. Yeah. Um, you know, win-win kind of situation. That's kind of cold blooded though. In the all in the same thing. Uh, so poor Viser. We're gonna say this. I think what felt was being illustrated here is that he is absolutely deteriorating, and that um, she kind of fails the one job that Otto gives her in the previous scene, which is you need to now make sure that you still have standing with Viserys. Focus on the fact that your son was had his eye taken, that you are sorry, that you know. Get him to understand that it's it's if you can get forgiven, and she has no luck. She's like, you know, I'm sorry. He just goes, don't want to talk about it. Yeah, don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but Viserys will forgive her. Give it time, and but I, he, he is he, even around next episode. Yeah, that's the thing. We we have no idea. But it, yeah, if he were able to be the good old Viserys that he was, yeah, he would totally mm. try. It'd be hard to ignore that eye, though. Whatever you see, uh, mm, yeah. Now, so you'll always be reminded. That he can't quite, you know. It's a skeleton in the closet that's got an arm out the door, <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, and he's practically a skeleton right now, too. Anyway, and that's the part where she's like, "I'm sorry." He's like, uh, "We will no longer speak." <laughs> just, just and there's Vagar. Yeah, hey, there's the oh, dragon just following him. The dragon is. <laughs> Look at those wings. It's as simple as that, a dragon goes from one side to the other, the biggest weapon that either side could have. Yeah. Fucking huge. Uh so the sea is a better ally. Is the sea always right though? That's when I <laughs> <laughs> that's a real question. Um, they're talking about they're comparing uh the Valerians and the Targaryens. Yeah. Um and well, at first, Renera propose, well, proposes a marriage, and it sounds like she wants to be like Aegon the Conqueror and have two husbands, because she she wants to uh, marry Daemon, uh, which she's kind of always wanted to do, all right? Uh, yeah. yeah. And then he's all, well, Lenor has to die for that to happen, and she doesn't go, no, no, we can't do that. She just goes... <laughs> He's a good man, you know. It's too bad. Uh, well, what didn't she answer? Just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I she know, knew that yeah. this yeah, pro proposition meant killing her husband, who just recommitted to being a devoted husband and perhaps even producing a, a true heir together and everything. And after that, she's willing to get him murdered. It's like, oh. um, so this is the thing we're gonna have lots to discuss. But the first thing I was just gonna say about the um being like Aegon sort of thing. I think you, Gary, you, you're right. She didn't even entertain it. She was like, no, I'd rather get rid of him. Like, let's... Yeah. That's so much she does not like Lador. Which I don't even necessarily blame her. He uh, he really needed to step up these past few episodes, and he hasn't. And it's cost them. Um, so I can understand why she's angry at him. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have Lara Strong here asking... This uh, guy... If you need me to do anything <laughs> for you? Yeah, he says, so if it, it is an are you want to balance the scales, I am your servant. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and if you remember, she was terrified of him at the end of last episode. In this one, she makes comment about how he's like full of, he's proud of himself for the work he's done, but she's like clearly kind of disgusted. After everything that's happened, though, she is now like, 
Yeah, it I'll, is I'll let you know. Getting more <laughs> cold blooded. Yeah, I'll let you know when I need you. Like this guy's so interesting as well. Like in the last oh, episode, yeah. he made such an impression. He's such a cool character. Yeah. Um, yeah someone just said she's perpetually uncomfortable around him. I think that is true, but it, I could imagine she'll get more and more comfortable around him when she starts committing to decisions that are not too far away from the ones that yeah. he has. Mm -hmm. A lot of characters move this way. They're like, I would never be like you. And it's like, well, I'll do something kind of like it. And then a little bit more. And then a little bit. And it's like, oh, shit. Well, yep. there we are. Descent. And mm -hmm. she needs somebody with not only skill, but uh, discretion as well. And he's all, call me. <laughs> uh, and they're discussing poor Lanor. But they're not talking. Here we go. Let's get. Let's get. Is that? Oh, it's covered up. It's covered up. It'll go away. Well, yeah, they're talking in Valerian. I suppose this, uh, we could just summarize it, right? They uh, they craft a plan. They do. That if they were married, they could have. It would be very strong. He could be king consort and everything. And of course, that will only happen if uh, it's dead. And yeah, and so Damon takes up that. Uh, that's a subtle implication. And so I I know you know, we saw the the end at the episode, and so Lainor's not actually dead, which I thought was a cool twist. But to me, that felt like that was actually a plan that Damon hatched with him, and that yeah. Renera act fully believed that Damon's off and that is dead now. Like I don't think Renera is aware that he's still alive. I but, unclear, I guess, if we'll find I'm that not out. Sure. I don't know. Well, all right, so. I, I want. I, I probably need to rewatch it to confirm it, right? But Damon had to have been in on this to uh, put the false body in the fire and char it to bits. In actual fact, we saw Damon kill someone else, and yeah. I think that's where he got the body. And uh, and then they yeah. staged that with Lainor, and then they both because it seems like Damon must have went with Lainor saying, "Hey, you got two choices: you're gonna die, or you can go and be free with your boyfriend." And Make it Damon fought like with Lainor. Damon liked his sister. There's no way he was going to kill him. But, yeah, uh, that's the thing about Damon. So it could be that, as far as Rhaenyra knows, uh, Damon facilitated the death of Lainor. In fact, the less people who know about this, the better. Yeah, and he's happy to let her believe that. But yeah, uh, Damon was clearly a part of the plan. So was Lainor. So was this guy. And uh, yeah, I just um, I don't know. I, yeah, I find it interesting that Damon wasn't willing to kill him, but Rhaenyra was. <laughs> was just like, yeah. Gosh. Well, yeah, was she's, getting more, uh, she's getting more cold blooded too. I, and and this, this is up. full on cold blooded murder. This is in her, from her perspective. She follows up by saying, I will not be a tyrant. And then Damon's all, You got to be a tyrant. You can't, like, you got people need to fear you. You got dragons. Why do you think we're in power? Do they like us? Uh, yeah. So a lot of people in chat say, Nope, she would have known too. It's like, I don't know. I don't think there's anything that's directed in the show that says that. Exactly. The, the show seems very clear that she was saying, kill him. And there's nothing to indicate she knew that Damon didn't. Plausible deniability. Someone's, someone's referenced that she said the sea is an escape, implying that she means that Possibly. Leno could escape. This is, why, this is why I said it's like, it could be either. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they sell the story to her is that he actually died. If that, that's you have to agree that that's a viable idea. It's just that uh yeah, it's okay. Hey, whether or not you want to commit well, to the one, uh, we'll all watch it again. And that's the good part about this show is we don't have to watch it again to look for the stupid stuff. We're looking for the stuff we missed, you know, the subtle stuff. And that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah it but in any way, they still did murder someone to get the deed done to get the false. They did. Yeah. Oh, um, true. And, yeah, I love how we're just like it was just a servant. <laughs> Who cares? No name. <laughs> <laughs> Some poor um, wretch just got killed. Was gonna, future episodes could confirm that uh, Renera knew, or it was even mm -hmm. her like plan fully. You know, like it looked up to the show at that point. So they need the to think that. Yeah, one of the reasons that makes me think that she wanted him to die is because he just committed that you know so the husband he just committed to i i'm with you i won't leave i'll be your husband and everything like that and so from her mind what makes her think that she can get him to run off into hiding and never return uh he's like it seems like she's stuck with him unless she gets him killed unless of course the idea is that he recommits to her and then she says okay no you suck and i know what you actually want and i can offer that <laughs> 
you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's viable either way. I think it, it's just that I don't it, know that the you're right. You're right. Well, I, yeah, man, I like God. how we discussed that. Geez, what a horrible. Oh, I know. What oh. a terrible. Ra- Rainy and Paulist, man. Their lives. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. Tragic. Oh, and, and already in the next time on, you've got um, Corliss's brother being like, who's going to inherit Rift, Driftmark then? Because. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're a family out. too. They've got that. They've got all of their stuff, their titles, their lands. Yep. Jeez. Like. Yeah, they've only got their uh, their their two granddaughters, basically. Well, I mean, by yeah. direct, you know, thing, but there's the bastards. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you've got those two as well. Well, that's I guess that'll be interesting as well. Like, what is that <laughs> worst house guest ever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true, so true. Um, Ryan Smith for twenty dollars says Shad Viking Fest in Texas is coming up in December. Can you please recommend where to buy authentic looking, high quality garb uh, that could potentially reach uh, me before then? Thank you and hail. Oh, that's a little. That's a bit of a tough one because there's like looks authentic, looks better than other things, but then there's truly authentic, and truly authentic is usually need to be custom made. Uh, and I don't do a lot of Viking kind of reenactment. I'm more, you know, high medieval period. Uh, but look, I mean, you can always try Arm Street. Arm Street usually has some cool, you know, Viking inspired stuff. Do double check how accurate because it can it can go either way with Arm Street. And then yeah, find find some you know um uh, maybe some forums and stuff for people with recommendations and things viking i mean isn't too difficult because if you just look up what is authentic looking viking it's actually far more simple than you might think get a good tunic right some you know pants authentic you know sh- leather shoes and a viking style belt and you're good to go no no leather arm braces okay it's not viking horn helms no no horn helms that's not that's not that far from me i could drive there I can get to Page, Texas. Go to Vi- Viking Fest. And the, the, the side shave thing. On, no, no side shaved, you know, thing on the hair. That's not a Viking hairstyle. They did groom themselves. They had like, you know, combs and everything. Do they have fades? No fades. No fades? Oh. They didn't have any kick-ass fades? Okay, just checking. <laughs> All right, so they get married and they're like, hey, uh, they're doing their vows, and we see that Lenor and um, his boy Toy make it. Yep, they're they, dude. They probably have the happiest ending out of all the characters. That is probably. They, I know. they get to escape. <laughs> they get to escape. Yes. This horrible. <laughs> that is the happiest Game of Thrones ending ever. Yes. <laughs> but they get to run off and escape. It was. Look at that. that. Game of Thrones doesn't have all the gay people killed off. These ones have a happy ending. It balances yeah, they, out. And, they get to go to Pentos or wherever else in Essos. They get a normal job. They probably get themselves a little apartment together. They you know, get to go to the like, Astro of Essos and live out their lives the way they want to live it. Um, and uh, I used to think that uh, Aemon, Master Aemon Targaryen, Maester, uh, Maester uh, Grant from uh, in Game of Thrones, I thought I always thought he had the happiest ending. He just died on a boat dreaming of his little brother. Yep. Uh, that was probably the nicest, happiest ending in that one. Actually, John Snow got it. He got to go to the north, hang out with Tormund. Yeah, but he had to die first. Yeah, <laughs> in a different way, which meant nothing in that. That's so dumb. Yeah, uh... yeah. So that's a uh, great episode, guys. Yep. Great. great episode. Well done. Uh, is it the best? Is it the favorite? Is it the favorite? I think it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite. I think it probably oh, is my favorite. It'll get superseded by the next one that intertwines maybe. all of the characters in significant ways with significant payoffs because that's just, it's getting bigger and bigger every time now. Well, because it's either this or episode five. It's it, hmm. it's this or, yeah, episode five is pretty good, but man, I've got to give it up for the kid fight. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, episode five, the, like the... um. To me, the uh, the feast scene was equally as good. I was so engaged, but this episode had those moments, but more of them. The kid fight, That's the true. dragon riding, the um, then the, the the scene in the great hall with the, all about the eye. That's just that it had multiple 
big moments that just ah. Oh. So yeah, this is well, yeah, because that really that scene and the the whole about yeah, like that was that was a good like ten minutes of just top mm. tier character work. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Eamon, Eamon uh, owned it this episode. I'm sorry, just everything to do with mm-hmm. it. I have, I'm so impressed with the writer on it. I was, yeah, was like in, in an hour. Look at how well they did characterizing him. It's it. That's not gonna. This show is. It's so ambitious. It's like it's really impressive how many how how long the story is is being told across you know in terms of years, and yet it's still super coherent. Even though you've got all of these different characters in play and all of these dynamics, it's super impressive. Like as a piece of writing, they have a chance here, like that I didn't think was even possible. Was getting Game of Thrones people back? They've gotten a lot of people back already. It sounds like they've gotten a lot of people back. Everything I hear about that final season, of, uh, I, like I mean, it killed everybody's. Inve- like nobody talked about Game of Thrones. After that came out, it was like it used to be the biggest thing in the world, and then everybody stopped talking about it. But now everybody's talking about House of the Dragon. They've done a lot of work, it seems, to rehabilitate people's trust yeah. in them. Like, so look, look at that. Are they actually learning from their mistakes and looking at, okay, what did we do bad? How can we like focus on what was successful and repair the problems that existed? I, I think if we're going to like truly see that throughout Hollywood, not saying House of the Dragon is the answer because it's not. Um, it'll be like over the next year or two because now it's been a couple of years since all well, there was no movies and there still aren't like we just went through the one of the driest periods. We had the worst box office weekend here in America in 25 years. Really? In 20. And that's wow. polluting fucking COVID. 25 years worst box office. And that's not and I heard that wasn't even taking into account of inflation either. Nope. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah. It's Wait, bad. when did that happen? Th- th- this weekend. This past weekend. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Not, no, the one before that. Sorry. Smile did pretty no, good. Well, uh, nevertheless, yeah. that's wow. Yeah. So um, th- there's there's panic. There's panic. So like yeah, now is the if if we're gonna see a change. It'll be over the next year. We'll see like sure things. I mean, you know, Deadpool and Hugh Jackman coming back. The audience. Mm. Sounds like well, I know it sounds good, but a PG thirteen Deadpool would suck balls. Sorry. PG thirteen uh, blade would suck uh, balls. PG thirteen blade is almost certain now if it were to believe everything that's rumored really about that film. Yeah, that is, that is really lame. I, I think it'll be I think it'll be uh, Disney will not be the one that changes ever. Ever they will go down in flames, but it will be like Paramount or somebody. It'll be somebody like Sony who isn't well, the top who needs to do good. There's you got it. Top Gun made so much money, like yeah. you got it, and I don't think anybody expected that. Which makes me wonder how that starts to inform. You know, like I think at the beginning of this year, I just presumed it was going to be a Marvel movie that was like the highest grossing film of the year. But then it turned out to be Top Gun by like a good margin as well, significant margin. Yeah. Um, and and then you see like people's investment as well, like in Mission Impossible, the new one. Seems like there's a lot of hype around that one too. And uh, I get, yeah, I guess I wonder like what Top Gun success, like what what happens from that because that's got to be uh, as well as I guess the state of the streaming world, right? Because it looks like it, I'm pretty sure isn't House of the Dragon actually being watched by more people than Rings of Power? Like yes. it's not actually making that much of an impact. More people, more human beings in America are watching uh, House of the Dragon than Rings of Power. Yeah, it's like <laughs> like Rings of Power costs a I lot love more that. money. Like like. You know, you, you want the message to get through, and these people are so thick if they haven't seen the message by now about how crap this woke movement and, and subversive and destructive it is to most things, anything that's good, right? You wonder if they haven't seen it yet, could they see it now? But with Rings of Power and House of Dragon as a direct contrast and the catastrophic failure that is Rings of Power, could that actually get the message through? Like, like Amazon, are you really wanting to risk a... a, a an L, a massive own and fail you like that again? No. Don't be like Game of Thrones. Be like Hot D. <laughs> be, like, <laughs> be like Hot D. Uh, Max P, one, two, three, ABC for 449. That's British uh, pounds. That's proper money. Hi, Shad. Sorry if I'm being retarded. Uh, by the way, uh, thanks for making a cameo on my video today, buddy. I saw that. I love it. Is, uh, that, that might be my best retarded ever. You clipped it so well. <laughs> Uh, that quarter black Garrett and gets all the credit. So 
Uh, but is there, well, I did instruct, I said, could you find Shad saying retarded? I'm sure he said it five times last week. So, <laughs> uh, but is there a way I can see all four covers of your graphic novel before I choose one? Thank you. I think yes. it, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, it's on the Indiegogo page. If you go there, the you'll see all page. four. And so there's two by uh, Mike, okay, and then there's one by Kane and White, which is awesome, and then there is um, one by Chris McGrath, which is the new novel cover for the second edition novel, but you can get it as a special collector edition cover for the graphic novel as well. And likewise, you can get the, um, the, the graphic novel covers on the second edition novel as a collector edition cover on top of that. And then there's Leatherbound! Oh, I can't wait for that, dude. No, I can't either. I'll get that. I'll get Isom from uh, Eric July. Uh, who's yeah, they're still- coming out now. I'm waiting are- for my copy of Isom as well. Oh, so. Sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get one CGC. See if they'll do it. Mm-hmm. I am, and uh, I'm, just- I, I'm looking forward to get Clownfish TV's um, a graphic novel yep. that they released as well. Good- and that one looks kid friendly. Yeah. I like. I want to read yes. that. And if that's good, I'm gonna get let my kids just. I I I've had so few things to give to my kids uh, apart from old stuff, nothing new, and uh, and so that'll be great if I can share the Clownfish one with them. Um, out of curiosity, what do you think? So I'm seeing a comment that says, uh, Otto saying Eamon losing an eye was worth it for Vega seals it for me on Otto's character. He's a villain. I'm not sure I disagree with Otto, though. No, uh, yeah, he, I don't think he's a good guy. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't root. Like, a Tywin Lannister I mean, was a villain, but you kind of yeah. like him, okay? You did, but he was a villain. We'd have, to, we'd have to get into the definition of villain to be certain on this for me, because that right. helped me... Orchestrating the Red Wedding would well, be... Wait, 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 hang on, just... No, there's no. only like... <laughs> there's only like... Pretty much everybody is a villain, except like Ned Stark. <laughs> <laughs> like, the thing about this world is... You know, like, Rob Stark, for example, marrying for love and ruining the fray... The, like the repercussions of that, but like you, insane idiot, you're getting everybody potentially killed. Like, but so, so like, being honorable, but you would have to side with the phrase. They were in that world; they were disrespected. Would do you like them? That's, that's kind of what I'm suggesting is that no. um, no, when it's when it, like the, the decision of Otto to be like, listen, chill out about your son's eye being taken. We got a dragon out of it. Is like is very pragmatic. Um, pragmatic. I don't know that it like perfect word, perfect word. In this world, you need to be pragmatic to survive. And he even mentions it. It's like, it's really nothing personal. It's just business. You know, this is how we do things in Westeros. And that's why it's like, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around some of the people. Well, half of them are fucking fake anyway on Twitter who get so behind Renera and she's punk rock. And like, she's an idiot. She's going to get killed in this world. Mm -hmm. She is going to get killed. Just like, hey, Ned, I loved him. He was an idiot. He was a fucking idiot uh, because of. Because oh, I loved him to he death. He was noble. He was noble. noble. He was noble. Yes, and his kid, noble idiot. <laughs> noble idiot at the end for trusting Cersei, but like Hang what on. he did at the end, like keeping his mouth shut and losing his head to save to even have the possibility of saving his kids was was good. That was fine. And we um, can all believe that he warged into a dog anyway. It would be curious to know. If Ned knew how everything was going to roll out and we rewound him a couple of days, what he would then decide to do uh, before, you know, giving Cersei the chance and trusting Littlefinger to point the, uh, as Littlefinger says, it's like it's not the, the person who controls the city watch is the person with the biggest purse, basically. Uh, mm-hmm. Hence being him. And then he's like, oh, well, use them to help me, Littlefinger. Littlefinger's like, sure. Hmm. That's I'll funny. That. <laughs> Remember that. Remember that for this show. Controlling the city watch, kind of an important thing. Kind of an important I thing. I shall. I'm sure. I mean, the amount of, like I said, the parallels, the echoing of different scenes. Because uh, I think Robert says to Cersei, "What would you have me do in terms of punishing for Joffrey's hand?" And and I think Viserys says to Alicent, "What would you have me do as a response to the eye being taken?" It's like, well, yeah. Uh, Ian Hines uh, points out for dollar ninety nine, if Lenor is alive, the dragon should sense it. That's a good point. But, oh yeah, I guess the dragon. This that, that is the, something oh, to solve. I wonder if they'll point. account for that. If the dragon will just go away, but you can't really hide a dragon at Essos. Like in terms of just, oh, Sorry. that's just my bad dragon. Don't worry about it. So he does have a dragon. Yeah, yes, yeah, he, he, he flew it in episode three. I, I, the... Sea smoke. You're right. Yes, yes. Okay, it's confirmed in show. Then he has a dragon. That is an important point. 
I hope to show you that, yeah. track of that. Yeah, I really do. Shad better have a legendary sword ready for today. I think he was. He did because the episode was freaking epic. Team was, uh, Team Black. Hello, Margary. Shad, Bringy. I could. Present. I could almost not give it a higher compliment than a freaking Kriegsmesser, baby. This is a new one. I just got it. Oh, look, look at that. Look How are you guys doing? Oh, that's beautiful. Hang on, let me focus in on you. A little pixelated, but that's okay. We still get that. That is awesome. How, how freaking sweet is this? Oh, man. Streaming with you is going to be bad for my bank account. Okay. <laughs> I got a King yeah. Theoden sword. I pulled the trigger on a King Theoden sword. I got a oh, unit. Nice. I wouldn't mind having Doc Sister. That'd be pretty neat. If they got it, the problem is um, Valerian Steel makes a Dark Sister uh, and, and Blackfire. But they don't make them look like Valerian steel because it's supposed to be smoke. It's supposed to be like really dark gray, and it just looks normal steel. That's my criticism of them. If they fix that, Mahler, I'll let you know. All right, yeah. That's yeah. Neat. If they fix that problem, because Valerian steel swords not only they're not only d d darker, they have like little designs in them because it's part of the the whole process of forging them with magic. It's it's dragon fire and magic. That's why mm -hmm. you can't. So reproduce. they're supposed to look like um, Damascus steel, then patent welded. Yeah. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Look at you. Out of curiosity, uh, Gary, would you rank Damon as a villain? <sighs> no. Uh, look, cold-blooded murder, yes, and uh, murdering his wife—that's that's irredeemable. He can't come back from that level of. Not in this world. And see, so I think like that's yeah, look, the thing about the, I know the, the label of villain. It's I know, a little like, complicated, look, right? I, I know in the world that that there's a different kind of morality standard, but still, like, murder is murder. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, I mean, Jon Snow committed murder too. Which Where one are you talking you about? Cor in the half hand. He had to kill Cor in the half hand. Oh yeah, but that was uh, he knew that they'd be oh, both murder. dead if he didn't do that. He said no. Still murder. I don't uh, think that counts as murder, though, does it? That's more of a... Under some form of duress, that's got to be... I'm not sure that would be... Fringy, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it would... It, like, there's, there's different ways that you could categorize um, it. Yeah, uh, under the chat right? just called me out. Way. The chat just the chat just said, Shad, think of Dalen, which is the main character of my book. And he, like, yeah, he did... Is he a villain, Chad? Is this possible? Yes, this is possible. Death of millions. Oh, but the question is, can you be redeemed? Can you? Oh well, yeah, no, that I th so sure, yes. but like I don't think David's looking to be re redeemed. I know. I don't think he's either. <laughs> I think Damon is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes and no. Okay, he does some very good things, and he does some horrible. But like, surely we, we both we all agree doing good deal. things and bad things isn't. Exclusively, everybody, what defines someone as a villain? No, I, I think in this in this story, everyone is like you'll you'll see some outliers. Like, I don't think Nettles would be considered a villain. Well, Viserys, right? <laughs> uh, Viserys isn't a villain. Uh, Sir Westerling isn't a villain. You know, uh, uh, but Kristen Cole is. Would you call him a villain now? No, he's an Not asshole. Yet. That's all. He, he well, okay, well, yeah. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. I have book knowledge. So, oh wait, wait. That, yeah. he, sorry, sorry. He did kill the guy, but we don't exactly know the reasons why he killed him. Yeah, so, that's a pretty fucked up thing to do. I mean, the guy I was. Think, um, yeah, I think we needed a line for that, by the way. Uh, even a line to say that uh, you know it's lucky you're not in a black cell, thanks to your connections with Alicent or something like that, just to let us know, because that's what we have to just assume right. Alicent protected right. him from that. We're gonna play a game after the finale. We're gonna choose who the good guys <laughs> and the bad guys are after we've seen. That'll be fun. Sure. All right. Pat, we're gonna get I, I imagine that the good guys category is going to be quite lonely. <laughs> we're going to have to be like really loose with the term good. Okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, as it. we, as I he, wanted to keep reminding people, is like, it is a, a tad relative, not just for the time that it takes place in, but also just the, the amount of when you have that many horrible people all around you, you have to make some decisions that are pretty rough, you know? So, it's yeah. true. I like, because I'm not sure I'd consider, um, uh, Oh, the, the the name just escaped me. Uh, the dwarf in uh, Game of Thrones. I, I forgot it. Tyrion, yeah. I'm not sure I consider Tyrion a villain. Mm. Well, most people wouldn't, but... Um, he is, though. In the books, he... In the book, out. well, book Tyrion and show Tyrion oh. are different. Yeah. Show Tyrion, <laughs> no. Show Tyrion, 
Yeah, actually, uh, Alt Shift X has a fantastic video about that. Watch oh. it. Watch it. Take a look at as long as he's not pushing like commie books, uh, God, it's like, what are you doing? So selling a book about communism. Oh, many uh, people are upset that Tyrion killed his dad as evidence of him being a villain. I don't know about that, guys. Uh, like, if did you see what? The <laughs> <laughs> For one, like, yeah, uh, it's much more cold blooded in the book. In the book, what uh, he does to Shay, and um, it's way better in the book, is what you mean. It is. That's what I meant to say. Yes, <laughs> it's they <laughs> fucked it all up, but it makes me sad. Because like, had it I mean, in the in the book, Tywin had it coming. In the show, it was kind of 50 50. Tyrion fucked himself over mostly in the show. I seriously like a lot of people don't recognize that Tywin was like. Uh, you know, I'll give you a chance to go to the wall, and then Tyrion's like, "No, I want to fight to the death." Thing the gods will decide. Ty Tywin's like, "Fucking what?" <laughs> I Sorry, <laughs> I did forget. Did did he kill Shay in cold blood in the show? I can't remember. So in the now. in the book, she uh, he like strangles her to death uh, from when she's sleeping. It's it's cold blooded. It's it's really grim, oh, but it's oh, really? absolutely supported. There's a really strong in the show. I, I, Gary, I still remember watching the episode unfolding because it was it was like the heat, the height of my investment. And I was, it's this weird feeling where you're so familiar with the book material and you're watching it unfold in show form, and you're like, this is supposed to happen, this is supposed to happen, and then they miss the part where he tells Jamie the truth about Joffrey, and uh, and and, and the, the, sorry, and, and the vice. I say truth. He he lies to to he Jamie because I did kill him. him and, off, yeah. and Jamie doesn't tell him the truth about. Uh, uh, Taisha, which, I and I was like, why the hell wasn't that scene there? What the hell's going on? You fucked this up already. What's going on? And then uh, Shay attacks him. She tries to knife him to death, and he like self defensively kills her by trying to stop him from killing. Her. And I was like, no, 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 that's not how it goes. You fucked no. that up too. <laughs> like, you stop. <laughs> it's all crumbling apart. Why have you done this? That's where it started. That's where it started. And then Go he's like, on Shay's honor, I shall not allow you to call her a whore, which never made any sense because Shay was not only a whore, but she was pretty proud of it. She was like, I'm good at this. <laughs> and she betrayed him as a whore. She's yeah. sleeping with people aside from him. She sells all his secrets away. He'd be mad about Taisha. He'd be really mad Absolutely. about Absolutely. The whole point was that Taisha wasn't a whore. I'm still very bitter about this. <laughs> this is the. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find out about Taisha, I think, in the next book. When, Someone when, in chat just said that was more as 9 11. <laughs> it was 9 11. It was. I was. I still remember where I was. I was like, you just annihilated an incredibly important payoff. And I've always said to this day, Tywin escapes seven. it. Tywin's character is still solid in the show. That that scene, he didn't get fucked by it. It's all Tyrion that gets fucked by it. I'm all in on this show. I'm torn tonight, though. I like Allison. I love Damon, but I hate Renera. It's good storytelling. Mm. Blue-eyed Scorpio for four ninety nine. Yeah, um, Rhaenyra's not. I think likeable. it's fine to. Yeah, I, I think it's fine to hate Rhaenyra. I'll say, yeah, I think it has something to do with the actress. <laughs> I just do. Um, <laughs> I think I, I I say this so calmly. I think I hate Rhaenyra as a person in the show because she. I kind of agree with Allison that she is just doing whatever the hell she wants, she doesn't care about. Mm -hmm. She's caused the war. She's going to cause a significant amount of deaths. Um, mm -hmm. All because she wasn't just able to, you know, it's, I know it's annoying, and I know that there's weird people making arguments online. It's like, you should be allowed to sleep with whoever you want. It's like, do you know what environment we're in? It's not, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, all right? Like, there's, there's if... This and, and also, like, like, Think about what reason does she have to want the throne apart from her own selfish desires for power? Is it? It's not like oh, there's a terrible king here or someone in line. If I if I I have to you know, or I think I'm going to be a great ruler or anything like that, she'd be an awful ruler. And uh, she's probably is preventing someone better than her taking the throne. And then on top of that, she actually did have an option to find a really happy, peaceful life. She had a great guy that loved her that offered his soul to her, and then she turned him down. For power and riches, essentially, uh, because it's the throne is mine, and so I'm seeing some people say like she did try to conceive with Lainor, and it's like try harder. This yes. is not something you can just go. Oh well, we gave it a shot. Yeah. Again, well, you, if you can get away with sleeping with the uh, Strongs, go ahead. But like, you can't have their kids. 
that's you, you come yeah, on. Yeah, break out the moon tea, like you did with mm-hmm. Kristen Cole. Uh, hey, Shad, do you agree with me that the kid fight scene tonight was better than the battle in the Rings of Power this week? Asked Sandy Q. Hundred percent, hundred freaking percent. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for the ten dollars. We all agree with you. It was better choreographed, more satisfying, uh, more characterization. I mean, there's uh, no competition in terms of which one has more character right. in it. Yeah, <laughs> it's no contest. It's Last just the fact thing, that it's got better choreographing. It's hilarious. But it, that's hilarious. even the even the hits felt like they actually landed and had more power and were believable. Where you, Galadriel passes an orc, doesn't touch him, and he explodes. Uh, first time hail hail to you Eamon coming in hot, dropping that Westeros diss track yeah dude the kid was great the kid was really fucking good well done uh team black but Eamon's one-liner was great also I think the last scene of the season is gonna end with Cole gaining no spoilers, his name. No spoilers. yeah Cole gaining okay. his nickname yeah <laughs> that's a possibility I mean, they could. No, I think the last. Yeah, I won't even say. I, <laughs> I think that'll be part of the. the that'll happen before the end of the season. I t- that could even be next episode. Dakota. So I, I want to know. This show earned that. What that what just happened there, by the way, because in the first episode's review, I think Gary, you would just you'll say it. You would you would happily casually mention the end of the whole story for all characters, and I wouldn't have cared. I'd just been like, eh. But now we're actually on eggshells. Like, please don't ruin anything that happens even in the next episode. We, we, like, we want to know now. Yep. I'm it earned that. To... Boy, it did. It did. It earned some respect. Just um, what helped was I stopped watching the behind the scenes. Let's talk about how we made the show. Yeah. That helps a lot. I just stopped watching those. Uh, Carl, Carl, that killed people, Carl, says AJ Buck for $10. Oh, my kid was talking about Walking Dead. Is it finally over? They're ending it. The uh, Walking Dead. Like several spinoff shows, though, as well. Yeah, they have several spinoff shows. I think they all should have been canceled seven years well, ago. Well, it's like the only thing AMC has, right? Other than Better Call Saul, which is now also over. What else does that network have? Um, Interview with the band. Yeah. yeah. Like the fact that you have to think about it. It's <laughs> not great. No. Yeah. Uh, Fringy, you better not be playing Mario Kart or Squid Game tonight. I no, Squid I have game. I, I Splatoon. I'm presuming. Oh, you, there are squids in that. Yeah, no, I haven't been. I haven't played Mario Kart for a while, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, full concentration for this stream. Uh, knife wielding women for four ninety nine. Sure, yeah, and, yeah. Before you play Squid Game, just hit us up if you need some help, man. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, don't play Squid Game. I can't believe there's going to be a season two. That's a fucking terrible idea. Yeah, that- I got real nervous about that one. I'm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want it. What's the worst decision, guys? Squid Games season two or Joker two? Squid Game. I actually think Joker two may be able to work because I trust Todd Phillips. Yeah, to some degree, maybe. We'll okay, we'll see. Fair answer. I think that's a fair answer. Todd Phillips. Uh, fucking, that was a great movie, dude. Masterpiece. But I feel like Squid Game getting a sequel is like, oh no. And then being like, we need to have more games. It's like, oh no. Oh, no. Squidder the gamer. Yeah. Uh, I'm shocked how good this has been. Will we get more of the new Dragon Rider? I really like that kid. Uh, Bubba Doom for $5. Uh, yeah. But he's going to be all grown up and he's the guy with the eye patch you see in the scenes. Um. Oh. Yeah, he's already in the next time on, and I want to see him already. Uh, grown up, mm-hmm. Damon. That's yep. going to be real cool. Damon my- is the Green's Damon. Might be my new favorite character. We'll see. I mean, uh, Viserys is still my favorite, but once he goes, and Damon's still damn good, though. Yeah, gosh, this uh, isn't it great when you have to you know, pick between which characters are so good. Yeah. Well, I think they recognize that. Let's lean into Matt Smith. People know who he is. Doctor, Crown, great actor. Uh, we'll we'll entice people in with this rogue because everybody loves a good rogue character, no matter what. Yeah, like I think every great story, especially in genre, needs a great rogue character. But then, uh, yeah, it became you know, then it went to Vis- Viserys, and now it's gone into everybody else. Uh, and they've done a good job. It's good writing, good writing, good directing. 
at everything. Uh, I emphasize, I empathize with King Viserys, but he's like an old boss I used to have. Doesn't matter what his intentions. Everyone's just waiting for him to die so we can get uh get on with what needs to be done. Blanco boy for nine ninety nine. That can happen, or it's just the vultures waiting for him to die to pick the place clean. Mm -hmm. And I would go as far as saying any of these characters that are like, I wish he would die so we can just start up this war and get what we want. It's like, I think they'll end up regretting that. Just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Please unconfuse me, gents. White hair plus brown hair equals white hair like the king's children with Lady Hightower. Then how do Renera's children not have at least have white hair given their Targaryen blood? It's the same math. Brad Mann for twenty dollars. Yeah. Um, well, it's like Game of Thrones logic. They just say like one color can dominate over the other. Sometimes a strong one apparently is that good. The seed is strong. The seed is strong. <laughs> Remember that? Ah, oh. that was uh, uh, that was the hands last last words, wasn't it? It was. I mean, Brad Mann. There's also the whole skin color thing, but we're not supposed to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for twenty dollars. Uh, Orion's X Rage for nineteen ninety nine. Purple contacts. Every Targaryen and Valerian needed them. I totally, totally agree. I see contacts in e every fantasy actor. Look at every orc has to wear contacts. Put in your freaking purple contacts. Uh, even the bastards, as it would have added more suspense. Side note: Loving watching Aemon rise to become spoilers. He's my favorite. Go the last. Uh, the last kingdom actors. He's the last kingdom actor. Oh, that's a good choice then. Uh, Tune Zone for five dollars says the hot, uh, hot D episode had sound issues for me. I had to turn on the CC to make sure what they were whispering. Hmm. I, I, we got it. We got it. Okay. I had a little hard time seeing it, but I was watching it on a fucking monitor when I go to my beautiful, beautiful media room that my wife built for me as a birthday present in this brand new house i'll be able to see if it just fine i think i hope and hear it fine uh, i'll double check tune zone for you uh Sci media for 20 dollars. the show is such a palate cleanser from the horrible piece of poo that is the rings of power i'm watching uh the rings of power because i find more joy out of efap and fft and disbrew and the rest of this amazing fellowship coverage thank you guys and thank you for the 20 dollars that's the one good thing that comes out of this, right? Is like shit content makes great content on YouTube. I can watch EFAP like for hours and hours and hours. And like, I really have to hold back from begging Mahler to send me a link. But um, like, there's so much good content out there. Disper's doing great. Shad's doing great. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, that's been that's the part that's really cool about it is like, I meet a couple people from the other shows that we end up bumping into people on and you know, the cross network in and just chatting about different things. You meet new people and then you're like, all this is happening because of these weird and bad shows that are getting released. It's just like, well, that's kind of a neat. It result, brings it? people together. It does. It does. I mean, we make the best out of it. Now we have like these crazy meetups happening and hopefully, you know, we'll be doing something, uh, could be doing something in the UK. Shad, I'll have, uh, I, I talk, I talked to my wife about it last night. She is keen. <laughs> so bored. My wife is totally keen. We need to get uh we'll work on the dates and yeah. Awesome, Mal has no idea what's going on, but uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going to the UK, baby, next year. So uh oh my. Yeah, we might make it a thing, right? And have a next good time. old time. Well, you know, we've all been like well, our countries have been fucking re retarded for the last retarded, three years. Retarded, mate. Now Retar we can go places and uh i want to go places and meet people uh jay schwalbach for 49 dollars and 12 cents it's very specific thank you very much uh i remember beating the fuck out of my brother uh we were a year apart i believe it made him uh the man he is today love family honor ass beatings make good men hail all <laughs> i love it yes it's true uh i had a big sister dude so, I mean, it, yeah, I got to swallow my pride when I say this one. My big sister used to thump on me, but she was five years older. Okay. So, beat the crap out of me. So, my older brother is, 
I, my older brother, three years older than me, so he always thrashed me, right? I could never win a wrestle against him. He pinned me every time. And we got stuck into it a lot. But what an interesting result is, whenever I wrestled someone of my own age at school, I just thrashed them because uh, I had a lot of practice. You were cruel. A, a much tougher opponent. You're a villain. <laughs> You're a villain. Shad's a villain, everybody. Actually, funny. I remember I was in year seven, and this uh, year nine, so two years older than me, came around to our friends, uh, and he was just being so up himself. And he was like, Oh, little year sevens and all that stuff. He went away, and I was like, Man, that guy was an asshole, like a jerk, right? But one of his friends was heard me when I said that he was near, and he told him, Right? And so this kid tried to jump me after school, he was like, What'd you say about me? And we got into a fight. And I thrashed him. Like, I pinned him. I got his arm into an arm lock. And he starts screaming. And then I was like, I can break your arm, you know. And he's like, don't break my arm, please. And he's, he's two years older than me this year. <laughs> nice. He, he could never look me in the face again. He, like, just avoided me like the plague. For the rest of the thing. Because all his friends were around. His friends were around. And this year seven pinned him down and made him scream for mercy. <laughs> That's a, like the one kid who bullied me, uh, fourth grade or something like that. I did what I I just went. I did the crazy thing. Like he just, I was like had enough, had enough, and I just like ah, I just started fucking pounding his fucking head in uh, outside the bus, and I was like I was all upset, and everything. You know, it was like uh, in um in uh, a Christmas story. It was just like that, dude. It was like some <laughs> just had a psycho moment, and the fucking bus drivers like pulling me off, and it's, we're bloody and yeah. But that dude never fuck with me again. It was great. Uh, yeah, I just like snapped. Uh, I love Damon, but Eamon has become my reason for riding with the greens. Says Minnie Galen for two dollars. Thank you on the donation side, and we got two from cami anime uh who sent me so much cool stuff thank you very much i met you at dallas that was freaking awesome glad you made it home safe uh here's another buck once this crazy stuff with all these shows starts to settle down i would really look forward to hearing you your opinion on the vineland is it the vineland saga it's v-i-n-l-a-n-d vinland saga vinland saga okay uh shad knows it pretty good it was so good. In fact, I stopped watching it, uh, episode 12, just to wait for season two. That's good. Uh, here's another buck. Thanks for covering the show. I'm not interested in watching it because I never even heard of Game of Thrones until I saw it on Emergency Awesome Channel back when I was watching CW Flash. Now I'm interested in House of the Dragon. Good. And if you didn't watch Game of Thrones, all the better. You can just watch this show. <laughs> like seriously just for fuck game of thrones just watch this show well, that's the position i'm in and it seems like i'm not missing so, out really so a couple of things that might be hot takes right um right. Uh, i look if i'm judging game of thrones season uh, one to five incredible writing right and i'm not discounting that i think i'm enjoying house of dragons more than even seasons one to five uh because uh, there's a couple of things that probably skew a bit more in my own preferences the medieval depictions are a lot better the armor's better and everything like that and look the writing is i'm really enjoying the writing so far there's less nudity as well and so overall i actually prefer house of dragons okay that's where i not knock it down like three points no boo. Yeah. No boo. <laughs> Gary does not approve. It's not that. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. Eight, I'm, you know, we're paying for freaking HBO. It's like the one streaming service I still pay for. I want to get my money's worth. You know. <laughs> and I don't want to watch Marilyn. I don't want to watch some miserable movie where she's naked and miserable. I want happy naked people, or at least you know, scoundrel <laughs> naked people. Does that make sense? I want to see sad <laughs> people. I might disagree, but I can understand the sentiment. Gary. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Kate J. Hi, Kate, for four ninety nine. I think Allison tries to be genuinely good, kind person too. But when push comes to shove, she can't deny that her uh, she's her father's daughter. Agreed. Agreed. Dude, you fuck with any mom. You see how nice you know, his little sweet mom who'll bake you cookies. You fuck with their kids, and she'll hack you to death in your sleep and feast on your corpse. Mama bear. Mama yeah. Bear comes out. I, look, that's one of the things I liked about that scene is like she just, you know, my kids were threatened and I like she snapped, but you can see why. Mm -hmm. uh, John Snow Show, to quote a Moody King I once knew, I don't want it. I never have. You're McQueen. Uh, Scruffy Pumpkin for $5. Yeah. 
man, I'm just thinking there's a timeline where Game of Thrones ended good. Don't you don't you wonder where that timeline? I, I blame CERN. Somebody turned on CERN. We got we got <laughs> put into just the, access the multiverse. Right? We got put into the shitty reboot, bad Game of Thrones, COVID timeline. Fuck that. I blame the scientists. Uh, Ronan 04 for $10. I would remake Game of Thrones from the beginning. Do what viewers haven't seen. Oh, I read this one. But yeah, I agree with that. I would do the books. I would just like be as yeah. faithful as you can to the books. And you would see a completely different Game of Thrones later on. Um, the show did a pretty good job adapting the books in the beginning, I thought. I thought it was a good you job. They've done things similar like that before, and it's been really successful. I think of the uh, rebuild of Evangelion, yeah, where yeah. It, uh, it felt it's, it started off like a pretty straight kind of retelling of the same story. And then, holy crap, does it go in a different direction, though? Uh, but, you know, it was successful, and I found it really interesting and engaging. Okay. Oh, got all the donation sides. Thanks. And uh, thanks again. We're circumventing Mama Susan. We appreciate that. William Owens for five dollars ordered the leather bound enemies of self graphic novel. Also ordered the full size Imperious Sword from oh. is it Cali McKill? Calamasil. Calamasil. They're a yeah, French Canadian based company. And so uh, it's, a, it's a kind of but oh man, yeah. Great, great lot weapons and that, you know, imperious recreation. And I actually just had a meeting with the CEO from Kalamazoo and I might be collaborating with them to, to make some other things. All right. Uh, William wants to know if you get a cut of from uh, Kalamazoo. You get a cut? Yeah, I do. I mean, it, it, it's not huge. They do the bulk of the work, the development, everything like that. But you get a little bit of cut from the from sword. The That's good. It's good to get a cut from the sword. <laughs> uh, oh, Vernon for $5. Uh, well, Sari's saying, uh, I don't want it because it means his family is dead is, oh, Luke, Luke, sorry, is such uh, an own on season eight's awful writing. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think about that much better than she's McQueen. Uh, it also like lets you know about the character. Like he actually like likes his family, likes his mom, likes his dad, wants him to be around. I mean, not everyone has to die. It's just the air, you know, or the, the current. Of, to me, it's more of a just, it just, it's the show being like, see, this kid hasn't been chewed up and torn apart by yeah, the, yeah, the existence yeah. of this world yet. He's still got a genuine perspective that everybody probably has at some point until they, they live in this world. And then they're like, nah, I want the power. The strong boys seem like good boys. They're bastards. They're yeah, and I think that's deliberate on the show's part <laughs> because... Right. It, it's the their their station has nothing to do with their choices. I think the last scene of the season will be. Oh, I read that one, and I'm not gonna. I won't read spoilers out loud. I'll mumble. <laughs> uh, I would. Uh, do, 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 do. do you remember the scene from Game of Thrones season six when the Hound meets with Barracks, uh troops and whips out his dong and pisses into the river that was dnd peeing all over the audience about laying lady stoneheart yeah I, I i totally remember that i know where i was when that happened uh i was in vegas i was in vegas uh at the millennium fandom bar watching that episode cw for ten dollars yeah fuck dan and dave man they got they got they got arrogant that's all it is i mean that's the only explanation i mean it's george's fault too he, he stopped communicating. He stopped writing the book. Dan and Dave got arrogant, felt like they didn't need them. They got Star Wars contracts. They were the talk of the town. They were winning multiple Emmys. People were just fucking kissing their ass. Where are they now? Yeah. Where the fuck are they now? Where are they now? What have you done for me lately? That's what fucking Hollywood is. Well, that's what it used to be. Uh, Aaron Wilson for five dollars because Lenore lives seems like we're not getting Adam Hole. Uh, sucks because he's uh Jon Snow parallel. Also, what's the chances of Sarah Snow girl boss of season two? We could still get Adam Hole. Um, Sarah Snow girl boss, yeah, maybe she's like a but she's a bastard of Winterfell that a certain character meets 
uh they're definitely going to go to they're they're going to add that because they want to go you you know they want to go to the wall they'll find an excuse to go to the wall in winterfell because there is there is no going to the wall in the story unless they change it but they have to now they fucking have to because they've they've got the prophecy of the song of ice and fire in it how could you not go to the wall and they've been showing this i think the last two no this is the is this the only episode that hasn't had a werewood in it one uh the, maybe one of the uh, hmm. i would say yeah the were werewoods have been all over the place uh until recently so maybe just the last two episodes i have to see what ends up happening with that yeah, shorty short you guys catch the strong boy say i don't want it yes uh uh i forget if it's season three or four but there is a scene where joffrey is taking marjorie around king's landing and he tells her about uh when renera dies so yeah, don't name your kids after her. Yeah, they tell that story um a couple of times. But Joffrey does blurt out, I believe it's at the wedding. Was it around King's Landing or was it at the wedding? At the purple wedding. But yeah, Joffrey, Joffrey tell you you hear her end in Game of Thrones. It's also in the special features. That that have been like on YouTube and people, the, the, those animated special features they did on the, the that's some of the best shit they've done. The lore special features are fucking great. Watched them all the time. That's the first thing I watched when I used to get the season and cared, uh, which I don't anymore. All right, we're gonna wrap things up. I'm gonna get the rest on a square up because it's getting late. And Mahler, it's like the sun's coming up, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not AFK. It's just I looked like my um, camera was dying and internet's dying. So to save people watching a pixelated, mutated monster, Dude. it's like, I'll, I'll save you from it. <laughs> you don't need well, you handsome devil, pixelated or not. Oh, thank you, sir. Not as handsome as you, though, Gary. Look at oh. that epic beard. Stop. One of the beards just covering <laughs> up my face. It's covering up the monotony of my face. Uh, are you going to be joining us again on Friday? Buddy? Hell yeah. Okay. Oh, I'd love to. Good. We got Chris Gore. Oh, um, awesome. I, I, and Mahler, I'm going to probably wrangle you in again soon. <laughs> so <laughs> just be ready. Uh, and Fringy too, maybe. Uh, like we can, Rings of Power finale is coming up, and, I, and I'll probably be making a little appearance on EFAP too that weekend. Mm. It'll be fun. <laughs> uh, Mahler, uh, anything you'd like to, to plug? Um, well, I mean, just, just the, the like anybody's followed listed to Gary or Shad or Fring or whoever else. We've got a we've got coverage of Rings of Power. We've got coverage of She Hulk. We've got well, we don't have coverage of Hot D. That's that's here. That's where you find it, and it's been a rather fun time. But yeah, just um, Mooler and Mauler. There's a channels where you can find all that stuff if you want to see it. Uh, Fringy, thanks for coming on, man. It was great yeah, talking. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, it's, we'll have you back. A fun time. If you want to come back for the last two episodes, you're more than welcome. I'd be up for it if it uh, all lines up. Yeah, we'll see. All right, cool. Anything you'd like to plug? Uh, I'm also on EFAP. I make videos. I'm pretty sure the link's been posted in the chat anyway. But yeah, that's what I'm up to. Fantastic Endgame video. Watch it by Frank. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's freaking... Uh, I was thinking about making one, then I saw yours. I'm like, don't need to. Oh, uh, well, I'm glad well, to hear that. I guess... <laughs> No, it's, a, it's perfect. Goal. It was. Oh, that took that took so long. <laughs> oh, that will probably be a project good. like that again. Nah, but well, hey, it's worth it. And you know what? It's worth watching in the future. It's one of those. Uh, it's good. It's evergreen content. That's what they call it. It's That's good. the goal. Yeah, it's a lot of work to make something like that, but hopefully, in the end, it's all worth it. I think so. Uh. And Shad M. Brooks, who has surpa uh, passed $200,000 on his graphic novel. Oh, and man. It, that's crazy, hey? It's so that's cool. Awesome. That's nuts. <laughs> Couldn't happen. Uh, I'm, I'm over the moon about it. It's actually $244,000 we've raised so far. And uh, so, guys, I reckon we could hit three hundred, dollars And let's push it as far as we can go. Because, seriously, I, I will be using it to just do more. You know, I got other projects that i can't wait to do we're gonna go nuts on the um volume two of shadow of the conqueror i was talking with the artist mike we just decided you know we're not gonna have a page limit which uh, like we're, it's gonna be as long as needed we'll do single panel page spreads to do epic moments give the story everything it needs it'll 
probably be over 90 pages uh, because now we can because the success of this one takes everyone's support and uh, hopefully we can even push it further because, I, like I said, i got more stories I'm going to do. I'm going to go out of my way to make some of the best quality graphic novels you can possibly make with some of the very best artists. I mean, did you guys see the Robin comic and the art in that recently? Uh, like, Down Syndrome Robin? Yeah. yeah I I'm not like, what the hell is going on? Marvel and DC have lost the plot, so fine. We'll make our own and we'll make him a thousand times better. And if Good. you see the art of this, you know, uh, Shadow of the Conqueror, the first volume, it's Mike has just done an amazing job. And, and we got an awesome colorist and also letterer and everything. Check it out, guys. You can get your own copy if you haven't secured yours already. We're selling the hardcover at the price of a soft cover, so it's a great deal. And there's even leather bound, it's available. And uh, I can't wait to I get it. it. I got <laughs> it. And the links are all in there. Look at that. Uh, thanks, Eric. You're awesome, by the way. Uh, so thanks, guys. Again, I love doing this. This is so much fun especially after all the shit we watch during the week. It's nice to end it with, uh, with a good show. With like Something a good. Show. So, now uh, to we'll... reset. <laughs> now to reset. Yeah. Back to the sludge pipe. There we go. <laughs> we'll be back next week around the same time. Uh, be the... Uh, no, it's not. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we got three more episodes to go. We got episode eight, nine, ten. It's ten episodes. So, uh, yeah, we'll be able to like really truly cleanse the palate of Rings of Power because uh, <laughs> it will be gone by the time we get to the finale. I'm so happy about that. So, thanks everyone. Hope you like these. I'm getting great feedback on them and they're doing very well on the channel. So, we really appreciate your support. Yes, we do talk about good stuff and we love good we stuff. Uh, we'll this is what we want. Imagine if we only got like this quality. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'd be too We'd happy. We'd be shilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, suppose. I, I will show good quality stuff. Happy to do. Indeed. That. Hell yeah. It's the blue check mark. That's what it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Catch you next week, everyone. Ciao. See you, folks. Bye bye. See you, everybody. Ciao,